Oh, nice. Yeah, some guy named Ryan. I don't, I don't know who, who they're talking about, but uh... <laughs> I kid. <laughs> it was great. No. It was great, man. It was really good. We got to go over the roadmap a little bit. We got to talk about um, the spaces here, you know, hopefully drive more attention to this, uh, which I really, really love to have this this with you guys. Like I said in the, sh- in the show, you know, you guys opening this up like this, you were one of the few projects that actually realistically opened this up to the community. And if someone raises their hand, whatnot, um, you guys are, are open to hearing what everyone has to say. So it, it is for sure one of the better um, platforms, better communities. And you guys really do um, have a great time doing what you're doing. And I love being part of it. Uh, thanks a lot, man. That means a lot hearing that feedback. Um, it's really it's a great opportunity for us to just to get to reach out to people and to talk to people and build these relationships. And so I think it's kind of like an honor to, to have the, the ability to even do this weekly right now. Um, yeah. I, I'm super happy to be here each week. Yeah. And what I would say is, first of all, thank you, Papa Joe, for the kind words. It, it does mean a lot. And I think that's part of the, not to say the why we're doing it, but it, it means a lot and helps, you know, keep us going. Um, but what I was going to say was if you're listening to this now, um, it, it, it might be a little late to try to get somebody in here. You know, obviously you can share a link and stuff, but what I would, uh, send to each and every one of you listeners is for next week between now and then plant a seed and talk to somebody could be a friend, could be a, a coworker, could be anybody. It doesn't matter. But try to bring somebody with you to next week's space. Uh, because I think that's an important aspect of where this kind of community has grown from. And I think, you know, in terms of marketing, they talk about, you know, word of mouth is the best advertising. And just tell somebody about it, you know, say, hey, um, if you want to learn more, uh, which you should want to learn more, because I mean, look at the charts and you know all these things. <laughs> but you know, invite somebody uh, to come with you next week, and let's see if we can you know continue to grow and make our family bigger. That, that's my call to action for everybody listening to to me right now. And with that that thought, um, I'll remind everybody, raise your hand, come on, come on stage, uh, join the conversation. And we'll, we do have, um, OXPEG, um, who is killing the emojis and I love it. Um, (laughs) bro, it's not even OXPEG anymore, bro. Well, I, I will always remember him as OXPEG, um, but that's, <laughs> that's that's his his actual at sign. You know, he may be going by ads.algo, but he's always OXPEG in my heart. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah that's my at. I, I, I did have a different uh, at uh, ads underscore algo, but I was like, you know what? Nah, I'm going to switch that back. I switched that back. And then I just kept my the only reason I have this title is just because I got that domain name um because it's my um uh uh it's my initials actually it's not it's not because i got it because i wanted like uh domain squat on like ads like it's legit it's my it's my initials <laughs> but um so it's uh it, it, and and under the algo uh platform uh, or the that was the only that's like the only uh uh coin like i wouldn't be able to get this under like ethereum like an ethereum domain so i was like okay where else can i get like a domain name from a different like uh uh thing that i can put on my that i can put on my twitter (laughs) but yeah so but yeah don't hesitate for for folks to come up here and say things because they let me come up here and say stupid things all the time so don't don't hesitate to come up and share your thoughts (laughs) yeah and on that note um i'd really like to get as many people up on stage as possible i like to just kind of hear new voices and and just 
hear opinions from new people. I think it's really fun. So I invite anybody who feels like it to come up onto the stage. I did write down a few little kind of like trivia quiz questions or something like that. And so if we get into the mood, maybe we'll do a little bit of of trivia. And I think the way that it would work would be uh, only people on stage can answer and you have to like mash your, your emoji or something like to hit the buzzer and then we'll call on you and you get to try to answer a question. And then if you get one right, we'll cycle you off the stage to give people, other people um, an, an opportunity and just some tiny little prizes from my, my personal Divi wallet. But it's just kind of fun to, to be more interactive and, and get more people involved. And so hop up on stage if you feel like it. And I think that sounds like uh, a good, a lot of fun. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for that to, to unfold here in a little bit, but, but it's only if the, if the mood is right. So, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're feeling in the mood, uh, we need to see some hands raised and some lots of emojis and all that fun stuff. If you want that to happen. Um, now, if you noticed I just pinned a second tweet, which is the uh, Divi wallet, the promotional or the promotion that they are running, which if you remember back, it's been about three, two or three weeks where if you bought uh, at least $50, so that was like the, the, the threshold, if you bought a $50 or more um, and you filled out a form documenting the transaction, uh, you would be entered into a drawing to win 50 more dollars worth of Divi. And we're doing that again, except instead of only 10 winners, we are, we're awarding 20 winners with the Divi, the $50 back in Divi. Um, And in addition to a thousand dollars worth of Divi being given out, uh, we also have some Divi, or uh, excuse me, La Liga swag, uh, we have some shirts, uh, team oriented, and we also have some soccer or footballs uh, to send out. So lots of prizes. There's like, if my math is correct, that's 28 prizes. And right now, we ha- we don't have 28 entries into the uh, the the promotion. So at least right now. If you go buy $50 worth of Divi, you have excellent chances of winning a either Divi or or La Liga swag. So the odds are in your favor. I never saw that movie, The Hunger Games, where that's a popular gif. But yes, the odds are in your favor. So definitely participate. You can click on the link in the uh, pinned here. Uh, to get more information, get access to the forum, all that stuff. And I guess uh, uh, an afterthought is use the Divi wallet. We all see the Divi wallet in attendance today. Use your Divi wallet if you're going to participate because you'll get two entries for just one purchase or, you know, one, one interaction. Whereas if you purchase on KuCoin or, or some other exchange, you get your entry but it's just one entry. If you use the wallet, you get one entry plus a bonus entry. So you get two. So definitely uh, worth it to, to use the wallet. And I saw Turbo Turtle has joined us on stage. Welcome to you, sir. Hey, everybody. I just have like a real quick second, um, but I wanted to say something. <laughs> was the was the the what's the the word I'm looking for? Was the laughter? I'll just leave out the word. But it was the laughter. Was that your your comment, or was there there more context to to that? Just, I'm just hyped, everyone, as I'm sure you all are. Yes. Yeah, how are we feeling, guys? Let's get a little sentiment check. If you're bullish, let's blast those hearts throughout the the comp throughout the uh the ch- chat here. Let's see who's bullish. If you're bearish, maybe do a peace sign. 
Yeah, I see a lot of hearts. I think we've got some pretty good reason to be bullish right now. Oh, crypto. Oh, wait, who is that? Who is that? <laughs> crypto Sherpa. Sherpa. <laughs> <laughs> My finger slipped. I don't know if you guys were reading uh, Nick's tweets this morning, but that got me a little bit hyped up. Seems like he's in a good mood this morning. Yeah, yeah. I was getting a little nervous when I was reading that stuff. I was like, geez. I was like, and then at the end of one of them, it was like, NFA. And I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> but yeah, yeah no, I... that was awesome to see, though. I, I don't see that often. Uh, actually, I don't think I've ever seen that. Like from Nick. Like I was, and so I was just like, whoa. So that was pretty big to see that stuff. Um, yeah. Well, I think... I don't know about you guys, but, uh, for, for, for Ryan, you know, the, the personal, uh, sentiment, I, you know, all the excitement that I'm seeing on Twitter about, you know, consecutive days of, of green candles and, you know, everything else is bleeding and it's terrible, except Divi's the, the bright spot, um, all that stuff and, and peep the chatter, the tweets, the, everything i'm i'm loving the sentiment and loving the excitement that i'm seeing uh all over the the social sphere so thank you to all of you guys who are contributing um it's awesome to see and i think that that uh positivity and excitement it uh it's contagious you know people people who maybe just kind of peripheral see it out of their peripheral and hmm you know, the market's bleeding, but they're talking about some some gem that, you know, has been up for for nine days or whatever. And we did have that one day. But but yeah, uh, share and, and that's how it, it catches on. And absolutely um, such a great narrative uh, for us to continue uh, running with right now, because while we're on this uh, uptrend, um, and everything else is falling apart and uh, um, people are looking over it like, what the hell is that? And uh, they're going to FOMO in. So we just need to keep uh, uh, driving the narrative. Yeah. And I don't know. I'll just FOMO is real. It's a real thing. It, it It's a powerful thing at times. I'll say, you know, it's a, it's a true, um, it goes to show what a project when they build a real foundation like Divi is building um, has built. <clears throat> um, it goes to show that when, when people start to recognize the value add to the world, not just you know, in humanity in general, when, when people recognize the, the value add and then the whole, whole point of making this like as easy to use as possible and to make it so that, you know, it can be used globally and for any purpose, I mean, the partnership with the Liga is just uh, is just proof right there that that the team here, the leadership here, are building a foundation that that is is not going to be shaken easily. And I, I I I've said it many times here. I'm going to continue to say it. I guess till I'm blue in the face. I've been this for a long time. I've not seen a project do something like this. I mean, I've built all kinds of different validators, all kinds of different nodes. Um, and you know, I'm, those of you who who know me and whatnot, I I'm or don't know me, I'm I've got a very technical background and whatnot. And I can tell you right now, having the ability to just couple buttons, you got a node running, couple buttons, you're staked. That's a big deal. Couple button, couple buttons now, you know, on ramp, off ramp. It's 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 huge, right? Um, and there's so much more that they're building. The the ability to do um, to onboard other projects easily to as a service stuff to the the whole DeFi stuff that they're working on it's just the roadmap's phenomenal and in the team behind it they know what they're doing and they're building like i said they've built the foundation like i have not seen in this space in in, in a long time I, I really really haven't so hats off to you guys and gals i really do appreciate it keep up the work and um with that i actually have to duck out i have another meeting i have to get to so uh, I'll catch the uh, back end of this um, as you guys have fun with it. So take it easy. And thanks again for coming on the show today, guys. Thank yeah, you thanks so Papa much, Joe. Papa Joe. Don't be a stranger. I won't be. You know that. We'll see you guys later. 
Awesome. And, and as Papa Joe uh, heads out, um, you know, people like him, like, you know, the, the Sherpa, um, you know, people from the community who are shouting it from the rooftops and, and everything. We love you. We appreciate you. And we love to see it from not just those guys, but we want to see it from, from everybody. You know, we, we, that's how we, we grow this family is uh, let, let people know. And speaking of the Sherpa, we have a Sherpa sighting. What's good, Sherpa? Oh, what's up? Hey, guys. Yeah, uh, not much. Chill. There he is. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> How's that fantasy football team looking, Sherpa? Oof, I'm worried after last night's match. My opponent, I think, scored like 40 points off two players. So it's like, I still got all 10 players in, so if I wait till Sunday. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I had a, I would say a modest showing, but I had three players play in the game last night, and... Patrick Mahomes, my homie, who looks like Nick, or Nick looks like him, kind of. Um, he uh, last week he he blew it up with his five touchdowns, and this this week it was a modest three, I think three. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a fun week with the fantasy football league. And uh, if you guys aren't you know paying attention, if if you're into sports whatsoever, um, the Sherpa has been producing little update videos uh, for the league. So you can kind of keep up to date with who is winning the league and who's doing well and who's not um, by checking out the, uh, the Sherpa's videos. And that's of course, in addition to the, the, the daily updates that he produces. So if you're not following and have notifications on for the Sherpa, you should Thanks, man, for that. I really appreciate that. And also, yeah, great job on the on the spaces. I always love being here every Friday. It's the same in. Even if I can't pop in, I just love being here live for it. It's amazing. So keep up the good work with that. Yes. Well, I think the sentiment in the in the Divi community is is improving in general and and that's what we wanted to bring some of that here and, and get, you know, everybody with the emojis and the Hopefully, questions, raising hands, talking, uh, keep it, keep the, uh, the the positive vibes flowing. Sentiment, good or bad, we'll be here. I mean, we started this when the market was in a pretty crummy, crummy place, and uh, I, you know, it's it's really wonderful that we're seeing some some price movement. We're finally, it looked like looks like. I mean, I, I'm not a technical person. I'm not giving any financial advice, but it looks like we're forming a bottom, um, and. Yeah, so it, it certainly helps the community to when the price isn't tanking. Um, but yeah, really the goal of this is just to, to make connections. And it doesn't really matter what the coin price is doing. We know if, you, if you're a, really believe in the technology and you believe in this team and the vision, we know that in the long run, price is going gonna, is gonna to be good. Um, and so as long as you can take that long vision, you just kind of have to to build through the the tougher parts of the market. Set it and forget it. DCA. Yeah. DCA. Yeah. And even, even, even though like other things like, yeah, there's a lot of red going on with other coins, um, you know, but it, um, but it's not really the type of red, like it's not insane. It's, it's just, um, it's just consolid, consol, consol, consolidations. Like it's a uh, like with with the uh, Bitcoin, for example. Like it's just hovering around the you know nineteen. What was it? Nineteen point seven to twenty k range. It's been doing that for like I don't know how long now. Um, but I mean, it's 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 clearly in a uh, like a supply zone, um, which means that just you know a lot of people are, you know, it means that the the market is comfortable with changing. Change uh, with uh, 
shuffling around Bitcoin basically um, at this current price point. And um, it just so happens that that's where it's happening. Um, and then, you know, we, we no one really knows where the next supply zone is going to be. Um, could be higher, could be slightly lower. It, 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 we, we don't know. It, um, uh, and that's, you know, for any coin, you know, you, the, you know, the, you, you kind of blow through some squishy spots in the order books and then things stabilize and then another thing happens. Um, it, uh, it just all depends on who is buying or selling on a given day. And that's basically just the crab shoot of what the, the market is. We just, you never know on a given day how the order books are going to get filled. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's my take on the whole price action thing. Um, and so it just, I mean, it just, so, I mean, I think maybe like, I mean, of course, like Divi's kind of, you know, kind of leading the charge right now in terms of like recovery, like, uh, rallies and whatnot. Uh, but definitely I could see like other coins following suit, uh, soon, um, but right now they're just still just consolidating in, in whatever pattern that they're in right now. And, uh, the market is comfortable with, with where those things are at right now. They're just, you know, coins are changing hands and being used and, um, you know, and then, uh, I guess it's just kind of like a waiting game for what kind of happens next. So, it's, um, I got nothing to worry about, not overextended in anything so that's you know it's it's that's like the ultimate comfort comfort zone is just you know you can have what you want to have um and then just you know you just make sure you're not like super overextended and then uh, you you can be comfortable no matter what kind of happens yeah i mean it almost feels like divi is in its own microclimate like we're, we're certainly affected by bitcoin and and uh ethereum and the general market around us but it seems like in times like right now it feels like we're more um affected by kind of local uh <laughs> just things that are happening locally within our own ecosystem rather than you know because the, oh yeah the like large, the, the larger narrative yeah is is kind of not what's driving our um our movements right now it's it's really kind of local things oh I yeah know, i agree i agree i was gonna say i know that you know we're talking about price and whatnot but one thing i'm gonna ask something of everybody again uh if you have a coin market cap account uh something that it's just kind of a fun thing uh and and i'm sure it, it helps in some capacity but if you go on coin market cap not only can you comment on a coin, like you could leave a little comment that says, oh, Dibby's going to the moon or it's not, you know, you can say whatever you want. Um, but also they've introduced, I think it's like in beta, but it's a price prediction um, tool in some capacity. I guess they, they ask you, you know, hey, predict the price at this date and this date and this date. Um, and I think, that is something that I'm not going to tell you what to put, but uh, I think it would be kind of fun and, and interesting to see if everybody went and filled that out, um, you know, getting that data and, and information out to other eyes, you know, outside of the, the community and the family um, might be interesting. So yeah, go on coin market cap, leave a comment, predict a price, go wild. I'm kind of wondering how the people in this room feel about the Ethereum merge. Um, if it's something that they've got strong opinions about or not. Uh, I think that it is something that is important to Divi in the sense that it's going to bring a lot of attention to proof of stake versus proof of work. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just kind of curious if people have some, some deep opinions on the ETH merge uh, I've really only learned what I could from other spaces and from articles and stuff like that. And so I, I always feel like there's a lot of gaps in my knowledge. Um, and so, yeah, wondering how other people feel. I, uh, so I, I, 
I kind of have mixed feelings about it. Um, it uh, it's it's I mean, there's good and 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 bad things I think about it. The um, well, the good part about it is like I mean, they're they're switching the proof of stake, which is awesome. Um, uh, I like that part, of course, but um, I don't know. It's 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 tough because I I you know, on, on one end, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of miners out there that were, um, you know, this was like their, their way of, of, uh, it was like an income stream for them. And even there was even like people in, I think there was, there was a lot of people in like Ukraine and those areas that were mining, uh, Ethereum to, to kind of get by while all this stuff was going on. Um, at least a, a few people, I don't know if that was, it wasn't probably not a lot of people, but, um, uh, but the, uh, I don't know. My whole thing is that it's, it's like an internet computer. And so with those kinds of things, I like things that are like, um, I think what it's, uh, well, so it's okay. So it had an inflation rate of like 4.2% with people mining. Um, there was no really capped supply at all. Um, and so now they're going dis they're, they're going deflationary. It's going to be like a negative 0.5% deflation, like per year of, of the coin issuance is going slightly negative. And so with that, of course, it'll drive up the price of the current, of the current, uh, Ethereum that's floating around. But I just kind of think that that's like an artificial way to do it. And I feel like that kind of discourages the use of this internet computer because I feel like an internet computer should be like affordable and available for most folks to be able to use. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I could be completely wrong with this. Like, I mean, it could just be completely fine and nothing, none of what I'm saying right matters at all. Like, you know, I could be completely wrong. Um, so, um, I don't know, I guess I'm, I'm just waiting to see what, what plays out. I, I still, I'm still going to use it. Um, <laughs> it just might be kind of tough for like some folks to be able to use it if it's, if it becomes a little too expensive to use. Um, and so that's the only thing I'm concerned about is just like affordability. Um, because I like to see those kinds of things used, um, because the most exciting stuff that comes out of that whole, like, uh, ecosystem is what people make with it. Um, and so that's, that's the most exciting stuff that I see with that. Um, uh, but of course the folks that hold ETH as like an investment, I mean, they're going to love it. Uh, I don't personally hold, uh, Ethereum at like from an investment standpoint, standpoint, I just get it, get some, if I need to use some to like you know, do like an NFT, buy an NFT or like uh, interact with a smart contract. But besides that, um, but I mean, supposedly it's, it's going to be really good because it allows them to scale and they're going to do sharding and all this, you know, super cool stuff. So, you know, I mean, I'm probably wrong on what I'm saying. I, uh, you know, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's my take on it. It's kind of mixed. It's kind of mixed. I'm, I'm, I like it, but also I'm a little nervous, but I, it, this nervousness that I have is probably unwarranted. I, I don't know. So, I mean, long-term scaling is a huge benefit. Um, usability, bringing down fees. That's all really amazing stuff. I don't think we're going to see those results for a little while. I think there's some more steps that need to be taken before um, that actually is implemented in a real way. But I guess some of the things that I'm thinking about around the merge are um there's a lot of you know there's a lot of talk um around energy usage and cryptocurrency and so with the move of from of ethereum from proof of work to proof of stake i've read a few articles already um talking about how okay well now that ethereum's done this bitcoin has to do it now because otherwise you know they they're just being completely you know, uh, terrible, evil environment killers, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's one of my thoughts around this whole thing is, okay, there's there's a lot of kind of environmental concerns. Some call it FUD. Some think it's very valid. Um, 
and how is that narrative going to shift? And do we think that there is value to proof of work blockchains? Do we do, should Bitcoin stay as proof of work? Should it not? I mean, what are some good uh, kind of debates around that? Um, and then it it also feels like again I feel like I have a, a lot of holes and gaps in my knowledge because I'm picking up a lot of this information secondhand. But it feels like the move um, of Ethereum to proof of stake has um, given a lot of control to certain powerful entities that may be uh, validating, uh, doing running validating nodes now, um, and may give. Uh, more opportunities for kind of uh, editing or um, just not being as decentralized as, as one might wish. Yeah, you're right. I, I saw a thing um, uh, earlier that said that uh, I saw some stats about like who is getting the most rewards right now from the staking uh and it's like it's like the top the top seven like entities that are like receiving staking rewards at least right now are like uh, you know like basically like you know the uh, big uh, like uh, basically big uh, companies that are like that have tons of ETH that are staking it right now like uh, uh, probably a couple exchanges and uh, stuff like that so there's I don't know if the um, like uh, other folks are getting as much right now, but I guess that remains to be seen. I'm still, I, I'm still bullish on both. Like, so I like both proof of stake and proof of work. I think they both work equal. Like I, bo I think they both work equally well. And so I actually like, um, uh, I mean, this is not NFA, NFA, but I actually invested a little bit in Ethereum classic as the um as kind of like a proof of work play just to uh just to uh uh, uh just because yeah, i'm interested in it and also i mean if you look at the if you check out the the hash rate charts for ethereum classic so for ev for everyone who's listening ethereum classic is actually like the original chain like it was th th this is like the og ethereum blockchain before it was hard forked by the Ethereum Foundation. And so regular like Ethereum, just regular Ethereum, is a hard fork from 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 what Ethereum Classic is now. And so I actually did a little investment in that. I'm not encouraging anyone here to do that. I'm just this is just a purely just speculative, like, you know, because I'm I still believe in proof of work as it, I think it I think it works. Um, uh, as well as proof of stake. It works too. But um, uh, uh, I'm interested. To see the, the the hash charts for the or the hash rate charts for Ethereum Classic literally have gone parabolic from all the miners moving away from Ethereum. Um, they so the hash rate for Ethereum Classic went from like probably around 50 terahashes per second to now it's over 300. Um, so it literally six xed over the course of a, a few days so the it's going to be very difficult to mine or it's it's more difficult to mine new coins out of there so of course the thinking there is that the value of these coins are going to go up so but that's nfa not financial advice that's just because i want it i wanted to i did it because i kind of just wanted to support their project because it's um it's the OG chain. It's the original chain. And uh, I don't know. I just wanted to show them some some support by throwing something in there. And uh, yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> I don't I don't know much about ETC, but um, I, I always hear of it as just being essentially a dead project. Is there actual development going on? Yeah, they got uh, there is uh, um, a new exchange, um, uh, a new like uh, DeFi or a new uh i think uh, yeah a new defy exchange uh was created recently called heb uh, it's like spelled h e b e um and that exchange popped up and is offering like uh they offer like you you can get like uh domain names and stuff like so a dot etc i, I might ads.etc as well uh, -oh. uh -oh. you read a little bit 
What's up? Oh, you were rugging a little bit. I think you're better now. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so I, I'm probably going to get the ads.etc uh, domain name as well, just just for kicks. Might as well. Um, and then, um, uh, but yeah, so it's it's growing. It's growing. It, uh, it definitely there's more eyes on it now. Um, I would I would I would agree. Like I I didn't really hear too much from them. Um, you know, just cause it's, it basically, they, they, they don't have much, I mean, it has a pretty big market cap. I mean, it's like, I mean, it's in the billions, it's like 5 billion something. Um, but, um, yeah, I think it's, I think it'll be a slow, it'll be a slow and steady kind of, uh, right now. I mean, right now it's the biggest proof of work, um, since ETH switched to proof of stake. Now Ethereum classic is the largest proof of work um, smart contract, uh, uh, or EVM compatible, uh, blockchain out there now. Um, and so that's, that's why I'm bullish on it. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, it was just kind of like, just, uh, you know, I just wanted to support them a little bit and, uh, it's like super decentralized. It's not like, it's not run by any, I don't think it's controlled at all by any like VCs or anything. It's very, um, it's ex- extremely grassroots, I think. I think I haven't dug. I <laughs> oh, haven't so dug into this. What's up? Wow. Okay. Um. I would personally, I I would love it if ETC mooned. I got a tiny bit of ETC in a wallet from a long time ago. I would be super happy. But um, you know the it's the original ETH chain, but the reason that the Ethereum foundation forked away to the Ethereum that we have now is because of the DAO hack. And so like ETC, as far as I understand, like they, they didn't uh, fix the coins from the DAO hack. So there was some issues with that uh, as far as coin distribution in in the beginning. I don't know how they dealt with any of that. Oh no, you're right. You're a hundred percent right. They just said, too bad so sad Oops. yeah and i actually yeah i mean i i commend that like big time honestly because that's like i mean that takes like i mean that takes you know that takes some like you gotta be like you know what i mean they and then some... they, they also have a, a long history with charles hoskinson uh, he was a huge uh, proponent of etc for a long time it's like he kind of took over the reins of etc and then he had a falling out with them as well um i don't know a year ago or something um yeah so it just seems like one of those one of those things that's been up in the top 50 essentially ever since it was created but is kind of just the shell of a project and again i don't i don't know that maybe there are some people working really hard building some amazing innovation um for etc but it feels to me just kind of like a shell of a project that every once in a while somebody tries to put some momentum behind in order to to uh, capitalize from so I would just be a little bit careful with that one. Oh, for I would sure. Like, for sure. I, w- I want to present somewhat of a holistic approach to the, the discussion or the uh, argument of, you know, proof of work versus proof of stake. And my feelings are that it's not that everything should be one or the other. I think each, you know, algorithm essentially has advantages oh so you want to destroy the earth all right all of them have advantages and they also have disadvantages you know if if you're looking you're comparing but i think what is important is that you know for something like uh i think uh, something that's intended to be a currency um might you know, favor quicker block times and and things like that. Whereas if you're looking at a store of value and, you know, uh, that's less of a priority. But ultimately, I think each of these algorithms and and there's different, you know, there's delegated proof of stake and there's, and you might think that, no, that's garbage. But ultimately, what I'm trying to say is each algorithm has you know, things that it does better than others. And it also has things that it's not as ideal for. Uh, But that's important to have that kind of balance in in terms of where we're going with, you know, finances and the the financial system that I think if everything is proof of work, then you don't 
you wouldn't be able to have projects like Divi or, you know, others. And on the other end, you know, if everything was proof of stake, I think we're not going to kill the planet by, by Bitcoin mining. I think it's, uh, I, I don't believe that art, that argument, uh, but there's pros and cons. And, and I think it's part of the ecosystem as a whole that, that makes it work. You know, if everything was the same, then there were certain things that we wouldn't be able to do. And, and this is again, a very high level kind of overview perspective, but I don't think there should be the, you know, oh, everything needs to be proof of work or, oh, everything needs to be proof of stake. I think, you know, differences is what the makes makes the world go round. And uh, that's not completely off or, or wrong when it comes to cryptocurrencies. But that's just yeah, my take. And, that's that's Ryan's take. And just from a security standpoint, we we don't want every cryptocurrency project using the same consensus mechanism. Um, that's just not, not, yeah, good. that's, that's, that's another excellent point, you know, cause if you crack one and everything's the same, then boy, you just keys to the universe. But, but yeah, I, I think the, the differences are a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I agree. I agree. Yep. It's, uh, yeah, it's good to have both. It's good to have both. Cause you know, um, it's, uh, you know, like you said, it's just different ideas and different, um, uh, different ways of, uh, consensus. And, and so, yeah, with, Oh, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say like, there's a, there's so much hypocrisy in all these environmental FUD articles that come out because they always talk about the energy that these uh, consensus mechanisms use as if and compare it to like a vacuum compare it to as if there's no energy being used at all it's like yeah bitcoin uses a bunch of energy to do a bunch of really important work um, and if you compare that to the energy done by the tra traditional financial system then you can start having like an intellectual conversation about um how much energy is okay to use towards these goals but if you're saying oh you know, Bitcoin takes all this energy and um, compare it to to just not mining Bitcoin or to, to using a proof of work, proof of uh, stake consensus mechanism. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. Yes. Yes. Now, since we have a moment of silence, I'm going to take this opportunity to change the, 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 the subject, unless of course people want to continue. I think, uh, the, the thing that is always on my mind, if you guys haven't figured out is Divi day. And as part of that, uh, one of the cool things we are planning or trying to work out is, uh, I'm trying to look to see who's in the room if, if we're going to talk about this, but, um, I, I will tease one element of Divi Day that if you are a Siege World player, uh, September 27th will be a special day for you because you will have the opportunity to, I'll just say benefit by playing Siege Worlds um, and, and more details will be released. But as one of the benefits of the global celebration that is Divi Day, we have uh, been working on an integration with Siege Worlds. And when I say integration, I mean a, a collaboration. That's a better word for it. But yes, we will be uh, getting lots of fun games, exciting things. Um, for Divi Day. So stay tuned there. We're, we're working on some tweets. I'm trying to get them out um, soon. But uh, yeah, that's coming up soon. But I'm uh, 
I'm finagling a. I'm finagling something in my house. Bear with me. Well, guys, uh, anybody want to want to do some trivia? Maybe we could get uh, a few more people up on stage. Do a couple of trivia questions. Give away some tiny, tiny amounts of divvy. Come on, guys. Don't be shy. Micro Hop up on stage. <laughs> Micro transactions for all. Or for one of you. That answers the question correctly. What's up? Rick. What's up, Rick? Any thoughts on that, Ryan? Um, I'm game. Um, if you're in the if you're in the Philadelphia area, um, as Rick and I are, reach out to Rick or myself or. Yeah, just just mention that that you would be interested in something like that because, I mean, I think it would be cool to have lots of localized, you know, gatherings where, you know, if you're in the UK or something and you you know your little group of friends that are Divi supporters getting together and celebrating, I don't know. I, I think that, that's a cool idea. Um, and and Rick. If nothing else, I would be happy to get together with you and <laughs> just hang out. But uh, what, what day is the twenty seventh? By the way, it is a Tuesday, which is not necessarily the the most conducive day for a celebration. But in terms of the global celebration, it's it's as good as any other day. But it has significance, so that's why we did it. Just happens to fall on a Tuesday. I'll have to look at that one. And then let's see, RoboSki, you, you you also came up. Um, yo, yo, Robo, what's going on? Howdy, howdy. I was just joining to volunteer myself for the trivia. Beautiful. So it looks like we've got our hosts on stage. We've got Rick on stage. We got Crypto Sherpa. We got ADS. We got Robo. And now we got Dustin as well. So that's five contestants. That's beautiful. Dustin, how you doing? Doing good. Thank you guys so much for holding the space. For sure. Is there anything you wanted to, to share with us today? Or are you just here to try to answer a trivia question? I uh, just have one question as well as do the other trivia, but uh, I got here like 10 minutes late, so I was just curious if there was any talk on the influencers. We have not talked at all about the influencers. Ryan, you got something to say about that? No, I was going to say, you may have missed the first 10 minutes, but you did not miss the influencer discussion because we haven't, we haven't, uh, we haven't gotten there. Um, and Where's the moon I... man? Where's the moon man? Yeah. Oh, yeah, but no. when moon is he rolling through? And also Nick? Uh, they're, they're international men of mystery. Uh, sometimes they will roll through unannounced. Sometimes they will announce their arrival. And sometimes they won't show up at all. Yes. It's, it's very mysterious. And... Uh... Yeah, I think we were all hoping that uh, Nick would be able to make it, but he is, if I'm not mistaken, in Spain for, I mean, he might be flying or he might be in transit to Spain, but he's uh, getting ready for El Derby, which is the notable game between Atletico de Madrid and Real Madrid, and... No, that's El Clasico. Sorry, I'm getting my I'm getting my my La Liga games mixed up. I I misspoke. I'm not sure. I'll have to look up and see. Of course, if I was Diddy Wallet, I would know. But uh, here we are. I can chime in on that. I think uh, Nick's there for El Derby, 
and that's between both Madrid, so Real Madrid versus Atletico Madrid. So it's a lot of Madrid in there. <laughs> okay, so I wasn't I wasn't far off. Um, I just know that there's El Derby, which is on Sunday, and then there's El Clasico, which is coming up on October. Sometime in October, <laughs> yeah. I think that it's one's like, Madrid versus Barcelona, or no? Yeah, I'm I'm not sure, but the reason why I was like the two Madrids, Atletico and Real, are are coming up this weekend because I've been looking at a bunch of stuff with that. Um, but uh, but yeah, there's a lot of tweets going on in, just in, in terms of that uh, that the wallet put out earlier today. So. I can pin those in just a second, but uh, yeah, be on the lookout. No, yeah, one of them is pinned. Hmm, do we have any word? I remember Nick mentioned like he like he has like two reasons to like be there in El Derby. Like he has like some activations going on, and then also he actually wants to meet some other guys from the La Liga team outside of, like the meet the districts we have, right? Well, what I remember about Nick saying is that. He's going there because there's some form of activation, but also there's, excuse me, a networking opportunity where lots and lots of people who are affiliated with La Liga are coming in for this game. And that's where it's been two or three weeks back, but he said that they were, he was going to be networking and meeting and talking with a lot of, you know, companies, project not not necessarily projects i mean like other extent, par- but... other partners and sponsors of la league right yeah 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 so i think that's why he's uh i like the sound of that part of why he's there yeah yeah, yeah it should be so good should be uh fun and, and hopefully we'll get some updates um on how that goes and maybe even some some clips i don't know i can't promise anything but that would be cool All right, Ryan, I'm going to need your help on this. Um, Rick, Robo, Dustin, ADS, Crypto, Sherpa, let's do a practice question. Let's use the heart as your buzzer. So whoever gets the heart in first is going to be the person that gets to answer the question. Ryan, I need your help to uh, to see who does the heart first. I'm wondering if it's actually going to show up the same on both of our devices. Um, so I- I'm watching. Okay, and let's say, don't hit the buzzer until the question is finished. This is a practice question. What? Oh, ADS, you're you're out of here. I'm just kidding. Oh, wait, what? Oh, my bad. <laughs> okay, so to if you want to answer the question, you hit the heart as the buzzer. But don't hit it until the question is finished. This is a practice question. Here we go. What is your favorite color? Oh, I saw RoboSki first, Ryan. Yeah, I got RoboSkeet too. Beautiful. So it looks like they're probably showing up pretty similar on, on our separate devices. RoboSkeet, what is your favorite color? My favorite color is Divi Wallet Blue. Yeah! Although officially, I think it's Blurple. It's Blurple. Blurple. <laughs> I, I yeah, there's a there's a purple and blue gradient. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful, though. I, I do agree. <laughs> Okay, and now our first official question. Let me get to my questions, guys. Let's see. Do, 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 do. This will be for 100 Divi. And that, that's not just any 100 Divi. That's 100 Divi out of my personal Divi wallet. 100 Divi goes to the person who can correctly answer this first question. Use the heart for your buzzer. Here's the question. What? No, sorry. When was the Divi Genesis block? Starting out with the tough one. Oh, Dustin. Dustin. Yep, Dustin was definitely first on that. 2017. 2017 is incorrect. I'm sorry. When was the Divi Genesis block? Oh, I was. Robo. Uh, 2018. Well, 2018 is correct. I was really hoping for something a bit more specific. Can anybody be more specific? If not, we'll give it to Robo. Or uh, I was going to say Crypto Sherpa. My, I'll throw out a hint. Think Divi Day. But 
Sherpa, what do you got for us? <laughs> I was going to say that anyway, September 27th, 2018. <laughs> Bam! I mean, you cheated because Ryan gave you a fatty-ass hint, but um, I'll, I'll send 100 uh, Divi to Crypto Sherpa and to Roboski. Thank you so much for participating. Um, what's the best way to do this? I think if you guys could... Should they put out a tweet themselves? Should they comment on the room? Should they comment on the room's tweet? Yeah, well, have them have them comment on the uh, the notification, like the the room announcement, because you'll be able to identify their uh, Divi Wallet usernames, and in all likelihood, tons of other people are going to comment their Divi Wallet username, and that'll give us some uh, <laughs> some engagement. Perfect. Um... So, yeah, I'll pin that, that little announcement up. And then if you could just put a comment saying, like, oh, thanks, Divi. I won 100, I won 100 Divi at the Divi Spaces today. Just something like that. Are we going to send Oops. in real time? Or are we going to answer, do more questions, and then? Yeah, let's do a few more questions, and I'll just send them all later on uh, sounds like a plan let's see all right so i pinned the little uh announcement for the spaces so if you could comment on that saying thanks divi i won 100 divi at the divi spaces today that would be awesome if we could get some more people from the audience who want to participate up on stage that would be fantastic Spread the love. Come on, people. You can do it. Just raise your hand. That was a tough question, but the next one is easier. I promise. We see you in here, David. Come on. <laughs> David, Divya Research, Henry, Mike, 40 ounce, Heather, who's who's, Tyler. Come on, guys. You're pretty much required to play. Grab a bag. Come on. All right. Well. Oh, Heather, let's go. Mike, yeah, there we go. Come on, come on. <laughs> oh, question has not been asked yet, but we're doing some uh, micro transaction divvy quiz. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I'll ask a question. I am horrible at trivia. And... Like, absolutely horrible. Nobody even oh. wants to when we go to the bars to do trivia because I would just not have one answer. <laughs> I, can't. I think of the answer that. Have... Heather, <laughs> it sounds like you're driving, and I think for safety and security's sake, uh, you should not be playing <laughs> trivia while you're driving. <laughs> Dude, I shouldn't be driving then. <laughs> <laughs> he was driving and he won. <laughs> oh boy. All right, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to ask a question. Um, when the question is over, the first person to hit the heart button gets to answer. Ryan's going to help me uh, look for those hearts. So do not hit the button before the question is uh, finished. Let's see. Oh, here's a pretty good one. I think you guys are going to get the answer to this one. But uh, there is a caveat at the end. Okay. Who is the Divi Labs CEO? Pronunciation counts. Oh, that looks like Rick. Yep, Rick. Jeff McCabe. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, my friend Jeff McCabe is the the uh, chief of the board or something. Chairman of the board. Who is the Divi Labs CEO? Pronunciation counts. I think okay, that's... so oh. 
I'm going to ask because I saw Rick and then I stopped paying attention. And then the next one that I saw was Dustin, but I don't, I don't know if he was actually second or just the one that flashed. Do do you have who, who we're calling on as uh, the next option? No, no, I don't. I'm, I was, no, I was not paying attention very well. I saw, I think Heather and Mike, they were were both popping up, but that was just, I went, I I read the question again and then there's the caveat after the question. So like, (laughs) all right, so I'm going to, I'm going to disqualify myself. This is Heather guys. How are you? Um, cause I'm driving and I literally like, what are you doing, Heather? You're trying to like, uh, hit the buzzer and you're driving. (laughs) It's so like, stop, (laughs) just stop right now. So I'm disqualifying myself. That's the correct answer. Perfect. I'm, yeah. give, I'm giving it to Dustin. All right, Sorry, Dustin. Everyone else, don't be offended. You'll have another shot, I think. Uh, is it Nick Sapanero? Beautiful. It is not Nick Soprano. <laughs> Wait, are we playing Jeopardy? Whoa, he asked that like a question. You got that, that father, counts. Ben, Nick Who Sapanero. is Nick Sapanero? Is that right? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Sapanaro. All right. So, um, any of the winners, uh, Dustin, all of the winners, actually, please comment on the Spaces announcement, um, which is pinned, the very most recently pinned post. Just comment on there saying, thanks for uh, giving, uh, I won, you know, 100 Divi. Thanks. And then put your wallet address so that I can send you some Divi later on. Divi Daddy, how are you doing today? Hmm. You sound very muted. (laughs) All right, so... Okay, oh yeah, yeah. This one, this one's decent. Um... So this one has two answers, actually. So there's the kind of more generalized answer and the more specific answer. Uh, let's see. If you if you get the more general answer, I'll give you 100 Divi. If you get the more specific answer, I'll give you 200 Divi. Are my contestants ready? Let's see a flash of hearts just to show you're ready. I see Mike. I see ADS. I see Rick. All right, we got a few people with us here. There we go, Sherpa. Magic Fud Cannon, thanks for the love, but you're not a contestant. Um, All right. How often? Okay, no more arts. Question question is in process. How often, you're watching this time, right, Ryan? How often does the Divi lottery occur? Oh, I saw ADS first, Ryan. Yep, I agree. What is once a week? You got the more general answer for 100 Divi. Fantastic, my friend. What is every Friday? That's no, incorrect. That's, I'm, going, just got yeah, I'm going. 100. Every 10,080 blocks. Boom, Mike. Mike, 40 ounce coming through with the big specific answer. <laughs> yep, I was going to say, Mike so, was definitely second, so... Awesome. So yeah, specifically the the lottery block hits every 10,080 blocks, but since the block time is approximately 60 seconds, that is usually about once every week. Well, always about once every week, but it it fluctuates it, a, a little bit. It, it's, and if you've noticed, it is slightly less than every week. So where it used to be Sunday evening, it turns into Sunday afternoon and then Sunday at lunchtime and then Sunday morning and then, you know, early Sunday. And then, but if you notice it is slightly less than a a week. So that's where we get that variance where it's not every Friday, which would be kind of cool if it was, but it's, it's slightly less. So just, uh, yeah. So it goes uh, through all the days. Yeah. Yep. That would be cool. I was just thinking it's highly unlikely that this will happen, but it would be super cool if the lottery block hit on September 27th 
I don't know that. So I don't think that's going to happen. Let's make but, it happen. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's all pretend. But if we have to crash the chain to make that happen, let's do it. Eh, I'm going to have to say no on that. <laughs> Well, I mean, that was a fun little test round of our, our uh, Divi Spaces trivia. Thank you guys so much for playing. Uh, please do comment your wallet address um, on the Spaces announcement so that I can send you your prizes. Sorry, it's just a little bit, but I am poor little internet person <laughs> or frog or something, and it is all I can afford. Now, I will ask, uh, you know, we, we had a couple questions. Canon, are we still uh, good to host some additional trivia in the Discord after the spaces? Uh, I'm walking out the door right now to run a really quick errand, so probably not today, just since we just did trivia in the server. But that's something maybe we could do next week or maybe uh, Divi Day or, uh, yeah, today. We're going to do all the things for Divi Day, so don't you worry. But okay, so today, how does that not... how does that work in in the uh, the Discord the trivia? Could you talk us through that a little? Yeah, bit? Yeah, we have a, a channel right in the server that's I believe it's called Trivia. So you just hop right in there. We have a trivia bot that I think is called Quizbot, and there are a number of quizzes that we can actually. Divi, uh, specific- All right, he's he's rugging a little bit, but um, I can I can explain. But uh, yeah, right. so he was he was saying there's a there's a server in the uh, the Discord um, labeled trivia, and there's a bot that runs through quizzes, and what it'll do is it'll ask a question. And it'll give you 30 seconds normally. I mean, it's, it's adjustable, but it'll give you a few seconds to answer either A, B, C, or D. And you, it, like with the emojis, and you'll click one. And you can switch your answer, even though I, I personally wonder how well it works if you do change your answer. I feel like it works best if you just pick your answer and leave it. But anyway, after the, uh, the 30 seconds, it'll award either points to everybody who got it right and the quicker that you punched your answer the more points you get for if you got it right so it's fun and there are roles there's a a quiz master role which i will brag that i am a quiz master um halo master 40 or whatever his his name is he is he always beats me but um he's another quiz master and so if you win a quiz when we're, we're doing these quiz sessions you can gain that role of quiz master so that's another kind of cool thing that and you're gonna win we got thing. going on in the discord yes there, there's also that yeah. well that's cool i haven't uh haven't been involved in the discord quizzes yet but i'll have to check that out yeah, we'll get one going soon. I uh, I just got a call and had to run out the door. I kind of wanted to get one going after spaces today, just since we have people here that we could get some engagement going in the server, but I just had to run out. So we'll have to do it another time. But um, usually uh, I just get the random urge for trivia, and I'll pop in the general chat and say who's up for some trivia. And depending on what time of the day it is, it can be pretty active or it can be pretty slow. But We'll try to do one that's scheduled uh, so people have a little bit of a heads up next time. And we need some new questions. So you you wrote all the questions, or somebody wrote all the questions, and input them yourselves? Yeah, you can um, go on, if you just search QuizBot, Discord Quizbot, I think it's called Quizbot XYZ. Um, you can create any any user can create custom quizzes, and you just basically call a command in the server like run quiz number one two three four five six seven, and it will pull any custom quiz. So I created three. One of them is just general crypto knowledge, 
two of them are mixed. Uh, well, one of them is mixed crypto and Divi, and one of them is primarily just. You sound like a rug. More challenging. Yeah, it's hard to write trivia questions. Like, I don't know. I I did a bunch of searching around the internet to see if I could find some like good pre-created uh, quiz question sets or something. And everything seemed. I couldn't find some good quality stuff. In that quiz bot, there's actually. Uh... I mean, there's thousands and thousands of quizzes you can look through that are seem. I think they're all user generated, but you know, on every topic in the world. So while uh, we've tried to stay kind of crypto centric with our quizzes, we could always have a have a quiz that's totally off the wall if you guys want it. Yeah, that might be fun as kind of like one off events, like. Oh, we're going to have a, a quiz day about hot air balloons. <laughs> Since we're talking about quizzes, I don't know if you guys remember the Divi quiz, but those were the good old days where every Friday there were three questions and you had to get all three of them answered correctly. And yeah, it was fun. Um, I remember. Yeah, I remember staying up late, late, late Friday night to cross check all the all the answers and make sure that winners got notified in a timely fashion. Back in the day. Well, looks like we have a new speaker raising their hand. Tylen Sigli, welcome to the stage. Uh, hello, you hear me? We do. Welcome. Uh, hi. First of all, I want to say uh, I, I want to excuse me for my English, uh, which is not so uh, perfect. I mean, when it comes to specific words, uh, um, I just freeze. So first, I want to say. Uh, you're doing amazing job i'm here like only four months in divi and it's uh, first ever uh, crypto project that i uh, fell in love with uh, so i mean uh, you people are uh, are great uh, i can believe uh, how it came when i uh, i had a, a small issue it was i don't know uh, that uh, display issue uh, and I don't know who was talking to me, but I can't uh, understand the patient that guy had. He he actually came, uh, called me and was leading me to through whole process and uh, stuff. And he was talking to me like I'm um, I don't know like uh, twenty points IQ guy. I did. Uh, I couldn't say anything uh, because it was. Uh, I, uh, I had to 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 choose those specific words which uh, I don't have because I I am not using uh, English uh, practically nothing. I only use English in Twitter. So uh, thank you for being kind. Uh, I mean. Uh, it's it's great to have community you can talk with uh, you can uh, you can always talk with uh, all the problems you have i mean it's amazing so so keep doing that work uh, it means a lot uh, i mean i believe in this uh, project like i never believed in project uh, ever uh, just because of you because uh, i don't know how to say it but uh, Though this support uh, means a lot. I mean, uh, anytime I had to ask a question, your response in in uh, I don't know a minute. Uh, so, so that's amazing. Uh, I only ha uh, wanted to say, keep doing that job. You're doing amazing job. 
Uh, and I have uh, one question. I asked David, I, I think that uh, today I'm asking uh, questions, David, because he's uh, kind and uh, I don't know why. Um, so I asked a question which I didn't get answer. And the question is, uh, is, uh, is DV planning to come to, I don't know, any uh, larger platform? platform like uh, Binance or something uh, because in my opinion how I see things uh, how I understand things when 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 project comes to to Binance it's uh, I mean it's it's the best thing that could uh, ever happen to project so uh, my question is uh, is uh, are you planning to do any of that or uh, yeah. Well, let me first say um, thank you so much for sharing your experience and just for getting up on stage and talking with us. That's really meaningful. And especially as you're saying that English isn't your first language. It's kind of scary to talk in these groups. And a lot, a lot of people don't like to. But the fact that you had the courage to just get up here and talk to us. I love that, man. Thank you so much. Um, and English is the only language I speak and I get stuck on words all the time. So don't worry about it. <laughs> um <laughs> you, you, you sound really good. Um, as far as um, Divi getting onto bigger platforms, um, so I don't think there's been any concrete statements from the team directly, but they have definitely expressed that their intention is to get onto bigger platforms. Um, I, th I think that the, the most recent thing I've heard around that is that there are multiple exchanges that are interested in, um, in working with Divi um, and the caveat being they want to see sustained, a higher level of sustained volume. And so, yes, um, bigger, bigger platforms, I think, are definitely on the horizon. Um, and especially with the DeFi initiative, that's supposed to be um, really helpful in sustaining volume for us. And so that should help um, some of those, those new deals materialize. Hmm. And just want to uh, say what you were uh, talking about when you mentioned our support staff. I want to bet uh, 500 Divi that that was the voice. He is uh, one of our our three main support staff who really, really go above and beyond to make sure our users have a good experience. And, uh, yeah, I can't count the times when I've seen him up at countless hours of the day helping people out. So shout out to the voice. Uh, yes, yes, it was the voice. I mean, <laughs> the guy guy was amazing. Uh, I couldn't believe he was talking to me for like, I don't know, 20 minutes. I mean, my English is poor and I was just before uh, I'm, uh, I was I was trying to get uh, to sleep. So, yes, uh, I was sleepy and uh, broken English and everything. And this guy really had the patience. I can believe um, he was leading me, uh, talking to me for 20 minutes. Uh, and uh, like I say, it was it was like uh, he was talking to some guy with uh, 20 IQ. And uh, I mean, if I had to do that thing with someone who who can't even tell me what what his problem is. Uh, I don't know. Um, he's amazing, yes. So that was the thing I wanted to say. Uh, you really are amazing. I mean, uh, DV is amazing. So yeah, just uh, keep working that way. And uh, I mean, I think we we all all in this community um, support you. Uh, and yeah, about my my uh, uh, courage to to speak, it was uh, it was it's now like a third podcast. I mean, I don't know if I can say podcast, but it's it's third time I uh, I wanted to request and yes, uh, third I, the third time it happened. So yes. Uh, well, thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for, for coming up and just know that you are always welcome to come up and share 
ask questions uh, in the spaces. Uh, and, and yes, you, you did an awesome job, you know, with your overcoming your uh, intimidation. But uh, yeah. no, I was going to yeah, say that the, the voice is, you know, we are lucky to have him because he is a special, special person. And uh, what he does for the community is really, really uh, just amazing. Amazing, and, uh, yeah. He was he was so calm. I mean, uh, I was trying to to say uh, what I I had to say and I couldn't say. And I mean, it was uh, in every case, uh, uh, every word I said. I mean, I was thinking and searching the words, and he was so calm. I I couldn't believe. And uh, yes, it was it was that uh, five hundred. 100 dB uh, and uh, the thing was uh, I uh, I opened uh, that uh, ticket and didn't uh, answer first time because I was uh, busy I uh, I know uh, I, I saw uh, I saw that you replayed me and didn't answer and then second time I mean it it uh, it passed by a couple of days uh, I saw that you text me again if I if uh, if uh, the issue is saved and and stuff and I didn't answer again and and you 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 text me for third time I mean I, uh, the the thing is I couldn't believe you uh, it was it was only about 500 dv uh, dish, uh, display issue uh, and uh, you were so patient I mean you wanted to solve the problem uh, I I left without words uh, because uh, I don't know which which pro uh, uh, um uh, which project uh, is uh, on which project you you could I don't know. You can't even get any answer on a different project. So, uh, in this case, uh, you wanted to help me. I mean, it's uh, it means a lot. Uh, I I started to believe in project even more since that happened. So uh, yeah, uh, I mean, it's amazing. Like I said, it's the it's the first ever project I fell in love with. So, so guys, uh, like I said, you are amazing, and and uh, that's it from uh, from my side. Well, we think you are amazing, and thank you for for coming up and, and talking with us. Absolutely, hey, Thailand. How, how do I say your name? Uh, it's uh, actually in our country. It's Thailand. Thailand. Um, well, yeah. Thank you so much for for coming up and talking to us. Um, I'm going to award you today's new speaker of the day award in our Divi spaces. You get a hundred Divi for being a new speaker and coming up on stage and sharing some stories with us. Uh, do you have a Divi mobile wallet? Uh, yes. Well, thank you. I, I do have a Divi mobile wallet. Uh, wallet. So sure. Just, just comment um, on the pinned post above. Just put a comment on there saying, oh, I won a hundred Divi in today's spaces and then put your mobile wallet. Um, address there and i will send you 100 divi okay just uh, i don't know uh, which uh, is that uh, pinned post i mean we, uh, where do i find it oh so if you just um look above uh -huh, like, okay above uh, our little dots yeah there's that divi project it's the, the announcement for this uh, twitter space uh -huh, okay i see comments so uh, one Hundred D, uh, wait, DV. Here we go. I comment. Do 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 do, and then just put your your wallet name or your wallet address so I can send it to you. Uh, okay. I send this uh, to you, right? Uh, in the comment or to me, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So Thank you. yeah. I said, guys, uh, you are amazing. Uh, keep doing that work, and uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, and you are amazing, as Ryan said. And voice is freaking amazing, and Divi is amazing because we are a group of amazing people, and we are yeah. we've got amazing yeah. developers working for us. We've got amazing 
uh, you know, C-suite team all around the world, hustling, getting it done, building these partnerships, building these this infrastructure, um, and just this collective of all this amazing energy. And so you are a huge part of it, um, and Ryan's a big part of it, and everybody in this room, and absolutely voice. Voice is like the spirit of Divi. Voice is Divi's spirit <laughs> animal. <laughs> yes, yes, I mean, yes. The guy, guy is so patient, and uh, like I see uh, this DV project, uh, I think it's something special because all the people, uh, I uh, every 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 guy who believes in DV, I mean, uh, it uh, it doesn't have uh, it don't have to be a guy, it can be a woman uh, neither, but uh, everyone who believes in DV, it's uh, uh, I see uh, he's there with a the heart and. Uh, I know we all believe in this project because, uh, yeah, this project really is amazing. I see you guys uh, consistently doing, uh, developing it. Uh, uh, and I think this project uh, really is uh, something special. So uh, I lost uh, I lost uh, the mind uh, what I, I wanted to say. I wanted to say uh, something, but, but uh, I lost the word. Uh, I mean, I... I don't know what I wanted to say, so so uh, if I'll remember, I'll come uh, again later today. But yeah, like I said, uh, for today, that's all. Uh, yeah, that's it. Well, thank you. And we'll be here next week and the week after that and the week after that. So make sure to just uh, join us and, and put I'll in whatever will. input you got. I will. Thank you. And I, I, I want to have everybody just take note of what just happened. Um, for those of you who feel intimidated or, or don't want to speak, uh, it'll all be okay. Just raise your hand, join in the conversation, share, share a story, share a question, uh, because it's very welcoming and, and friendly up here. So look at, look at what Thielen did. And I encourage some of you other listeners, if you're on mobile, being the key, um, come up and join us. Let's have a chat. And Dustin, I don't see your address in the comments. And another thing I just thought of, Tilan, I hope I hope you're going to be participating or at least contributing to the, the Divi Day celebration. Um, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, that's one thing. But again, the, the, the Divi Day is about celebrating everybody that is part of this, this wonderful project um, from the community up to the top. Uh, we're all kind of in it together to, you know, create opportunities for, for many people. So um, the more participation in Divi Day, I think the grander it will be. Um, and that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, right. You got more to say about Divi Day. Well, so, I can honestly guys, talk, talk lots about Divi Day, but Rick, yes. So on Divi Day, does the the deflationary aspect kick in on that day for rewards? That's a good point. And I want to say it makes sense that it would, but for some reason I thought that didn't happen until October. Um, uh, I'm just trying to think if I can look that up. Because, yeah, it makes sense that it would. But again, I thought the time frame was closer to October. Um, if only the voice was here, he could tell us. But I could actually tell you because I have it on Excel when it was last year. Because I track all of my rewards. So I have... The fourth of last year, it kicked in. No, yeah, no, nine ninety. 
It was like, I think it looked like the fourth, October 4th of last year. Yeah, so just a bit out, outside of September. And, and just that, outside. Would make, that would make sense because, like we were talking about for, um, for the lottery, it's a little bit less than a week. And so if you're saying, you know, every year, but every week is a, a hair shorter, then it'd be a little bit later. Um, but then we're going the opposite direction. I don't know. I'm not the technical guy, but I know that, yeah, we will be noticing some reductions in our master node and staking rewards, but that is part of the, uh, you know, the inflationary protocol or whatever to keep us s s sustainable, I guess. Could be a good trivia question for somebody. Just saying. Hey yep, and that's a good thing for Ryan to know moving forward. So, <laughs> Magic Fud, welcome back. Sorry, guys, was having some major connection issues there. All good. Glad to have you back. What did I miss? I think you missed Dylan coming up and, and being brave and telling us about his experience with Divi, which was awesome to hear. Um, I rambled on about Divi Day for a little bit, but uh, yeah, that's kind of where we're, where we're at. We were scratching our heads about when the uh, the block reduction happens, the reward reduction. It's coming up at some point here. Oh, it's a good question. I haven't looked at that in a while. You know what I was thinking? Because um, I haven't I haven't thought about this in a while, but as the Rewards reduce over the years. The lottery contribution stays the same, correct? The, lo yes. uh, the actual number of coins mined in the block? Yeah. Well, no, so like the, the amount that's allotted to the lottery. Yes. Yeah, that, that stays the same. Which is interesting because, uh, you know, hypothetically, one would think that as time goes on, the coin value is going to go up a bit and the amount of coins in the lottery is staying the same. So that lottery is going to be pretty epic. A, yeah, people are going to be winning like before. thousands of dollars. <laughs> well, think about it. Well, if you, did you ever hit a dollar? I mean, you hit the lottery, it's $252,000. That's yeah, pretty that's nice. Oh, yeah. Divi dollar is imminent. It's dollar. I've been saying this for forever. One dollar is programmed. Yeah. No, I've been saying it to, literally. Whenever my friends see me in real life, they always say, like, the first thing they say is, like, Dibby dollar. Because, like, that's like, I was, <laughs> I, every time I would talk to my friends, I'd be like, I'd be saying, Dibby dollar. And then they would just be like, Dibby dollar. That's basically how we say hi now. The lottery is going to be a bigger part of the strategy, especially for Wells, whenever then the actual, you know, rewards. When rewards are two percent, the lottery is going to be more important. Very interesting. What do you mean by rewards two percent? Curious. Whenever the inflation rate gets that low. Uh, it's two point something, right? So, but the lottery is going to remain the same. Uh, my point is that if you have a large enough amount of divvy where you're able to win the lottery on a regular basis, um, that's going to be very important. Like splitting your addresses to make sure they're all, uh, you know, eligible for the lottery is going to be more important than ever.
Yeah, it'll just bring a, another element of gamification. And I did ask the voice about this block. Um, well, I, I, I found the block where it'll happen, but um, in terms of when we anticipate that block to be validated, um, I've asked. So no guarantee that he'll see it because he's a very busy, busy guy and doing lots of things. But the question has been asked and we shall see. I will report back if I hear from the voice. He might just pop in when he sees it because I mentioned the space, but. You know who I haven't heard from in a long time? And that is Divi Research. I see you, Divi Research. I also see David, and I would love to, and Grant, and I mean, all the people I would love to hear from you, but I feel like Divi Research and David were, have been wonderful voices to hear from in the past. Oh, I got what, one. What I got a, one. <laughs> what about the AI bot guy? Oh, yeah. Russian AI bot? Yeah, Russian AI bot. Where's he at? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure he's around. Dude, I got to be honest with you. I am sitting here playing Siege Worlds like a crazy man. This game is so good. It is it is so ridiculously good. It's gotten so much better just over the last like eight weeks. I was playing eight weeks ago and it was one thing and now it's just continues to get better and better. So I'm just sitting here playing and playing like a crazy person. That sounds really, really fun. I wish I could join you on my Mac computer. <laughs> well, I I I heard some good news. And I'm not sure what I can say, but it's good news in regards to a Mac and it's good news for Divi Research. If you're, if you're playing Siege Worlds, you will like what is announced for Divi Day. Okay. Uh, because there is a, there is a tie that again, I'm, I'm in a discussion with uh, Jake, who is the, the, the lead, you know, the developer who's, who's doing Siege Worlds and <laughs> trying to figure out i tried to have him on so he he could say what everything that we could say right but, uh it didn't work out but no it, it, it's going to be a good thing for for siege world players and hopefully by divi day the fun thing for siege world players will be you know compatible uh or accessible for us mac folk yeah, I love my Mac, but whenever um, whenever COVID hit, I was like, you know what? I'm going to have to get something where I can play some games at home, so I bought a PC for that. I use my Mac for work, and uh, my, my PC is for playing games, for sure. Yeah, my Mac is for work, and my PC is for staking Divi. <laughs> That's awesome. But I can't wait for them to get the wallet. They've got this wallet feature in the game. And as soon as they get that thing tied in, that's going to be something. Can you use like uh, like Xbox controllers and stuff like that? Um, whatever you can attach to your computer. I mean, it's, it, you're going to have to key map. So there's they don't have... Um, there, there's, the key maps aren't adjustable right now, but, no, okay, but okay. there's a lot of software that will let you take your Xbox controller and then map it to whatever key you want to be on the keyboard, and that's the way you would play for sure. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh my gosh, sounds complicated. Oh, it's definitely not for the amateurs for sure. When you shoot these guys well, great. in the head, they have this really, this really uh, satisfying sound, like you just. Uh, threw a penny into a bucket. It's great. Well, the place and rate chart dropped in the comments for anybody who wanted to reference it. We need a we need a Linux build too. They need to do a build for Linux. <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's they, they, there's so it's a it's a great thing right now because it's not actually 
you know, big time release because they can make a lot of changes and do a lot of changes fast. But uh, once you're actually out there uh, having to support multiple platforms and create multiple builds and all of a sudden it, there's, there's a lot more effort to create anything new because you're having to support so many different platforms. So I totally get why they're doing it the way they're doing it. But also it is going to be more fun when I've got more people to play with for sure. <laughs> Yeah, and I've been playing video games in a long time, so I'm not going to be very good. So you could just kill me a bunch, and that'll probably be fun for you. Yeah, well, the thing about it is it's a uh, it's a wave-based game where you've got the bad guys. The bad guys come in waves, and then you're trying to survive the waves. Every wave of bad guys has more bad guys, stronger bad guys, that kind of thing. So, yeah. You know. So if you haven't logged on in a while, does it take a while to log back in? Or do I have to update it? Um, so I always um, grab the latest version from the website whenever I'm playing. And um, it just doesn't take long to log in at all. I mean, just a few seconds. Yeah, I got to probably re-download it. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't auto-update or anything like that. Oof. It, it looks like we've got games interactive in the audience. Um, I was trying to in, invite them up to speak, but I think something a little funny was happening. But yeah, if you want to hop up on stage, Games Interactive, we'd love to hear from you. If you wanted to like announce that, oh, so are you on? Are you on desktop? Maybe because when no, the request, no, no. does it come up okay for you? The, when the request comes up for me, there's no option to check mark them up. It just there's an X to turn them down. Oh, okay. Huh. Says that he can speak, but yet it says there was an error adding him, and I suspect he might be on desktop. Games Interactive, if you can hear us. But you can't even request if you're on desktop, right? This is true. I don't know. But yeah, it's, oh, not, it's not giving me an option to bring you up. It just has the option to kick you out <laughs> well quickly because i invited grant up to the stage and we haven't heard from him so grant thank you for coming up i hope you've been well how are you sir it's it's a good day ryan it's a good day yeah. can you hear me can you hear me yeah I, awesome. I can hear you and i agree <laughs> um so hey um you mentioned that you did did you find out what block number the next uh inflationary or do you guess def deflationary event is because you can do well, some quick math and quick math here since we're on one minute blocks yeah well i think the block number yeah i have or i was looking at it and then i'm not sure is it on that little picture that uh, mike posted um i keep seeing the date um uh the sorry the i guess it just the it just says in the white paper like the year and the, the number that, you know, the, the amount of uh, block reward, it doesn't yeah, say so the if... specific block height or the, you know, the block number. So unless I'm reading this wrong, I think it's block number. Are we, are we, what, what block number are we on? We're at, because I just, I just got a reward like a couple minutes ago oh. and I saw oh. it's at 2,083,000, 2, which I did the math and that's, Four, three point nine something years worth of blocks, so that's pretty much lines up with four years being um, in the next few days. Okay, so. so I I feel I feel a little dumb right now because the chart that I was looking at was one that Neegs posted, mm -hmm. and in the comment that I'm now seeing, I saw the chart, and so I I was just going off the chart on October second, two thousand twenty one, two thousand twenty one. Um, it says we passed the third year of Jimmy blockchain. So, but it's uh, the block number is twenty one o two four zero zero. So two million one hundred. Yep. Two minus two zero. Doing math. Nineteen thousand four hundred minutes from right now. So start start counting. <laughs> so divided by sixty, divided by twenty four, thirteen point four days from this moment. What what date is that? That's the twenty ninth. Okay. 
Well, that's that's according to. I mean, it's probably so, going to be pretty accurate because it's so close. It's just you can't you can't extrapolate that when you're a year away or you're two years away. Or I'm sorry, yeah, if you're in the like closer to a year, but once you're two weeks away or a week away, then it's pretty accurate because pretty much every you know every block's about a minute, give or take a few seconds. So it's it's going to be pretty close. But if we get some quick block times in these next two weeks, we might get a lottery on Divi Day. <laughs> I suppose. I and also, um, I think I figured out the issue why we couldn't get Games Interactive on the stage. I think we had too many people on the stage. So um, I I brought one person back to the audience, oh. and we now oh, have Jake. Jake O'Connor on stage. What's going on, Jake? Hey, how's it going? Can you hear me? Yes, welcome, Jake. Great. Yeah, I heard you were speaking about Siege Worlds. I was just on my Mac listening in, and uh, yeah, I thought I'd join. I wasn't signed in on my Mac, so I was just listening privately. Well, thank you for joining us. And yes, we were talking about um, what we, in in the, the WhatsApp chat, that we've been talking about, and I, I didn't know what I could say and what I shouldn't say. So... Um, I, I've been hinting that there's going to be some connection between Divi Day and Siege Worlds. Um, and I don't know if you can expand on that at all. Yeah, of course. So we're looking to do um, a competition um, with Siege Worlds where on Divi Day we'll reset all the scores for everyone and um, do a, a challenge really to see who can get the most kills or. We'll, we'll come up with some metric for success that is fair to, you know, based on skill. So it'll be either the most damage or the most kills or something like that. Whoever can do that on the day. Or it might be like the most damage in one game. So it's not based on time, it's based on skill. Um, and then we'll have a high score available on the website so people can search for their name and see where they are in the high scores and will display the top 10 or top 20 and there'll be some kind of Divi prize. Um, I'm not sure the amounts just yet. I believe that Jeff is going to put some money in and I think Ryan said he might as well. So yes, I'm sure there'll be something and uh, yeah, it should just be a, a good chance to really get everyone online at one time. I think the the problem is currently with the game is People are playing it, but at different times, and it's a very solo experience at the moment. And obviously, we made it multiplayer for a reason, so people can join games with new people, and we've got voice chat in the game, so people can chat to each other. So hopefully it should add a new dimension to the game when people are trying it. Yes, and, and as he mentioned, uh, Jeff had said he would contribute, uh, I, and I'm going to contribute to the prize. Um, that's still up in the air, but another another opportunity to win some Divi and, and make uh, the 27th a, a good day for you. And all you got to do is dive into Siege Worlds and, and play – play as much or as little maybe you have one one good round and and that does it or maybe you just play all day i don't know that's going to be up to you but uh yeah it should be fun yeah and i think what would be great is if we can do some uh not just one large prize for the best player but maybe there's a few prizes for spread across the top people and then um there could be some kind of hidden fun rewards that maybe the person that gets the most headshots or the most arm shots or something random could actually win something just just to kind of reward all of the people that come in and try the game out. The person that dies the most. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a good one. <laughs> most easily killed. <laughs> hey, Jake, is there any, any possibility of a Mac build for Divi Day? Um... Yes, I'm working on that at the moment. I'm actually moving to Costa Rica on Tuesday to live there. And uh, all I'll have is my Mac with me. So I'll <laughs> definitely have Mac builds in it on the go. Well, you're moving to Costa Rica permanently on Tuesday? 
I'm going to go there for about three months and see how I like it. And then awesome. yeah, potentially live there permanently. Nice. Are you excited? Are you going to be near Jeff? Uh, I'll be be with the Enki Tech team. Uh, I'll be staying with them for a while, oh, and then man. I'll see you from there. Man, Enki is a beast. <laughs> that guy is so amazing. He's like one of the most giving and genius people that I've met. Yeah, I think there'll be a lot to learn from them while I'm there. So I'm pretty excited just about that. Jake, what are you going to do with your car? Um, well, it's coming up to winter now, so it's going to go under the covers and just stay at my mum's house for a while. And then it will come out next summer. Okay, okay. And for those of you who don't know, um, Jake posted on Twitter, I think it's been about a month or two, but um, he uh, he got a, a sticker from me and he put it on his... Uh, is it a Ferrari? Yeah, it's a Ferrari 458. And it's it's really funny because, um, like, back when, before I had, like, any kind of supercar, no one would ever ask me, like, what to invest in or, like, no no one would, like, if I told people about cryptocurrency, they'd just say, sell it, you're going to lose all of your money. And then as soon as I got that Ferrari, like, literally everyone keeps asking me, like in person when they see it, they ask me like what I do for a living and like what I invest in and stuff like that. When, it, Cause I made a fair bit of money from Bitcoin um, to get the car. So I generally tell people that I've made money in cryptocurrency and they're constantly asking me what to invest in. So this is kind of why I got this sticker to give people a hint. Don't ask me. Just look at the bumper sticker. Yeah. I was going to try to look and see. Uh, I was going to pin that that tweet so that everybody knows what we're talking about. But, uh, yeah, no. It, I'm excited to to see the, the build, not only for Mac, but for the Divi Day, you know, the competition. And, and there's still some uh, intricacies that need to be ironed out. But uh, that's something else that you, you guys as the community can look forward to um, come September 27th. Hey, Jake, thanks so much for, for popping in here and answering some questions. Uh, obviously, we want to respect your time. So if you got to go, you got to go. But um, I'm just wondering about the social aspects of the game. Like what in what ways are people going to be able to socialize within Siege Worlds? Uh, that's a good question, and it's kind of something that I'm quite passionate about as a gamer because um, when I was growing up, I played games and I met like people from all around the world, like in China and India and stuff, and got to speak to them growing up. And I think social gaming like has a big impact on the world and like how people perceive other people when they become friends with people around the world. Um, it stops just so much racism and, and stupid pointless stuff that exists in the world. So I definitely want to have that as like a, a a focal point of all the games we make at Games Interactive. Um, and with Siege Worlds, what I would like to do is, obviously when you go into a game, you'll have voice chat with the people you join with. Um, but we're working on like more of a, a social version of the game. So it will be like one open world kind of game, kind of like Daisy or Rust or something like that, where um, everyone can just join this one big world. And there'll be kind of waves of monsters that pop up and you can explore together and kill them and stuff. Um, but it will be more based on like giving people a chance to like collect equipment and, gather weapons and upgrade their gear to to take into the the main competitive game and i think that aspect will be much more social because we'll have voice chat based on proximity so when you run up to people you can chat to them and and work together um so i think that will be one of the main things going forward that we'll be looking to work on 
And I think that will kind of tie in nicely with the play to earn aspect as well, because we'll have the equipment that you can earn over time, like some of the best weapons uh, you'll be able to earn and then sell to other players as NFTs. So, yeah. I guess, yeah, that's, that sounds like some really cool stuff. Um, I, I guess sort of what I kind of envision in my mind, it's something that I would like to see. It may be kind of far down the line, but are, are there going to be playable areas that are not necessarily part of like fighting off these waves of monsters? Like, I guess what I kind of envision is um, like a bar where people can hang out and maybe like, on television screens in the bar you can see the people fighting off the hordes of monsters and you can maybe make little side bets on who you think's going to win or um, play little mini games in there or maybe you've crafted weapons and so people can meet you there and buy weapons that you've crafted you know just kind of a, a social area that's not necessarily it's still a playable area but not part of the the siege of monster killing yeah um that's a good idea and I guess in a way I've crafted the game to be a bit like that because if you played games like Call of Duty you'll notice like you just go through menus until you get to a game but I kind of wanted to put people straight into the game when you log in and have people interact with stuff um, so it is more kind of like the metaverse style of game and there is potential to add things like that quite easily. Um, currently in the lobby, I guess that's the the only social area um, that exists at the minute, and you can chat through text, just not voice at the moment. Um, but yeah, I think like what you mentioned is actually a really good idea. Like if you could spectate other games and place bets, and like have just things that you can buy, like say if it's drinks at a bar or bits of clothing or or fireworks or whatever you want to mess around and like socialize in that area that could add another dimension to the game that would be great it's just um i guess like me me and jeff and all of the team have loads of ideas of things we want to add and we're just trying to prioritize at the minute and get get what we can done to make make the game as fun as possible yeah, that makes total sense. I'm sure you guys have a ridiculous and endless amount of really fun and insane ideas. But at the end of the day, you need to actually make something that's playable and usable. Yeah, unfortunately, and this is a very sad thing in life, but people can generally come up with ideas quicker than developers can make them. But it's coming. Uh, all the fun things, all the good ideas. You, you guys are working on them, and, and and we're looking forward to all the fun that that comes from uh, Games Interactive for sure. Yeah, it's the same with the Divi project and and loads of other things. It's just so much in the pipeline of things we can do, and it's just trying to, you know, as a team, we're just making what progress we can each day and working as hard as we can all the time to, to get there. But yeah, great things are coming. Well, we've had, uh, we've had Jeff and Heather on here somewhat frequently talking about lightning works and siege worlds, but I'm, I don't think we've had you on here before. Have we? Nope. It's my first, first time awesome. here. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for, for joining us on stage. And if there's ever a point where you've got something, a big release or something that you'd like to promote and get some more engagement on, it'd be, it seems like you'd be a great guest to kind of uh, formally take over one of our little episodes. So keep that in mind and we'd love to, to have you hear more. Yeah, thanks. It's been great to be here as well. And normally I'm not the type of speaker to kind of do things like this. I'm normally just coding away and doing that kind of work, but it's been fun and I'll definitely... Uh, tune in more and, and try and get on stage if I can. Nice. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, you're always welcome. So don't don't ever feel like we don't want to hear from you because we do. Uh, we're all, you know, everybody's interested in, in what's going on over at Siege Worlds, just like everybody's interested in, you know, Lightning Works and everything. So you're welcome back anytime, Jake. Cheers. Right. I'll let you get on with other stuff, but I'll keep listening. 
And the man, the myth, the legend, the voice is in the building. What's up, voice? We were talking about you earlier. We were praising you. Maybe I even referred to you as the spirit animal of Divi. How you doing? Do we have room for him? We've always got room for the voice. Well, I maybe. know, but I'm just saying we maybe we need <laughs> no. to kick somebody off. We might have to kick somebody <laughs> off. Me. You could always add me as a co-host or something and then... Uh, oh, yeah, because Ken add more. Co-host. If, if Yeah, if Kenan was co-host, then we could add more people on stage. All right, well, I invited Kenan to co-host again. And then... Well, voice, may, voice may not even want to say anything. He might just be oh. here. For... Oh, you made yes. it! Get <laughs> you guys came up with a date and time for the uh, block reduction. Yes. What, what you... um, we, we... Acor- according to Grant, which I, maybe he's not here anymore. But anyway, he said um, according to his calculations, we're looking at September 29th. That is that is but correct. Speed so Grant is. We're going to speed up. <laughs> we're going to speed up the blocks a little bit though for the next couple of weeks because we want it to land on Divi Day. Yeah, exactly. You make it faster. Um, yeah, you can't do that, <laughs> but, but that would be funny. Uh, it is nine twenty nine, right? I mean, that's that's the that's the date, and uh, yeah. So you guys already know that you can just look at the. It's going to change obviously a little bit um, because based upon what uh, what. Uh, was just mentioned about this block time. It fluctuates a little bit up and down, going towards sixty. It's uh, it's roughly the uh, what is that? Two billion, two million blocks. So one hundred and two thousand four hundred is what the reduction is. So, yeah, we're getting close. It's about uh, eighteen thousand ish blocks away. So we're less than two weeks. There's roughly ten thousand and eighty blocks in a week. So yeah, it's less than two weeks, and then bang, the reduction. Yes. So, voice, because you are here, yeah. you've graced us with your presence. I know that you were tweeting and you were letting everybody know about the merge. Yeah. Um, and I, I think since you're here, I, I would be curious to see or hear maybe your thoughts on it, or maybe your well, just yeah. What are, what do you what did you take away or you know. What was your impression about the the merge? Well, I, I think my point of view is a little bit different than it would have been, you know, five years ago, right? Um, you know, I am so focused on helping other people in the Divi community that I'm more concerned about, well, what is the Divi wallet going to do? What is, what is going to happen? Are we going to see some weird things? Um, because you're going to ask, and I want to know, and I need to be involved in that. So I'm actually, if I step back and I and I look at, where I'm trying to be mother hen in one case and in the other case, I'm curious about crypto. I'm surprised there wasn't as much dissension. I was thinking there would be more dissension. Um, but I do know that some people migrated to other chains, um, you know, Ethereum classic and those kinds of things. And, uh, there's a, um, potentiality of uh, ETH, uh, proof of work, right? ETH proof of work, which is, uh, being supported by some, uh, of the exchanges that are offering the uh, temp tokens for those ETH proof of work. And it's really going to be dependent upon the pools that are running. And I think Poolin is the mi- great is the larger mining pool that is supporting. Um, if you are running your local machine or you're running a rack and you're going to participate in a pool, you can start mining on the ETH proof of work blockchain. They consider themselves... Um, the second original, right? So the second original uh, Ethereum that's proof of work, they would, of course, harken back to the original, which is the true original, which would be Ethereum Classic, right? Obviously, there is um, uh, what, what makes a blockchain is its immutability, is its immutability, which means we don't change history. And of course, history has been changed on Ethereum uh, back in 2016. So depending upon your purity, which I'm a purist, um, which some would disagree with. Uh, Ethereum is the is the fork of what would be Ethereum Classic. So, yeah, they carry some similar opinions. 
That's my opinion. It's, it's a dissenting opinion. Well, <laughs> well, no, but I mean, it's always, I, as you know, uh, I always appreciate uh, learning and maybe getting a different perspective on things than my own because I, you do a lot of different things and it, I love I love the opportunity to, to be able to ask you for thoughts and suggestions and stuff because you're a great resource in addition to being uh, uh, more than much, much more than, than just a foot washer, as you like to say, yeah, yeah. Uh, to the, the community as a whole. I'm just a community member. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. I just have been doing it longer than many of you. I've had opportunities that have been given to me that are just different than you have. So and everybody has shared with me and all those people that shared with me did that freely. And so the, I just model what those people who helped me long before did, right? And they didn't charge. They didn't have a special Patreon channel. They didn't charge. They didn't write articles to charge you to read. They just sat and shared with me night after night, week after week, day after day. And I just, I just do the same. I'm just modeling good people. That's all we can try to do, right? Yeah. says the the words of the the saint oh you know what about a saint everybody doesn't know i got really cranky with ryan just recently i was i i was sick and i kind of i kind of just admit it i bit your head off i mean there was no question um and and so you know we're all weak at times <laughs> so i'm not perfect <laughs> poor ryan <laughs> well and and so the other end of the the perspective is I asked him for his advice and he did respond a little bit critically, but <laughs> he, he invited me to have a discussion mm. and where he explained his, his perspective and his point of view, which then I, 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 I felt like I kind of deserved the, the harsh reaction. And, and, no. you know, we all, we all kind of ended up a little bit better for, for, for better or worse but yeah. no uh, do you guys want to like role play that scenario right no now? no it's not <laughs> <laughs> I don't just, it's not it's not the soap opera of divi <laughs> they'll be taught everybody be taught. Yeah, it, everybody's gonna be going i wonder what was said no it was nothing bad it's just no it, it's out of because when we spoke <laughs> he he sounded audibly under the weather oh. and so that's what i uh, he sounded rough but uh you know as as you would expect he uh spoke to me for for an hour and explained to me everything that now makes perfect sense but no i i, I appreciate all those opportunities even if, if if initially it was a little bit harsh but yeah. uh that's all a little good. harsh a little harsh yeah i had a fever that day i still kind of have a fever I didn't have a COVID, but I was kind of sick, but that's just me. So I'm a human being. I'm a human being. There's no question about it. Can fail all the time. Yes. I've had many of you well, on concierge calls. That's uh, so most of you know how I am. So that's how I normally am straightening things out. I mean, I see the names on here. I see most of you, many of you have had one-on-one -on -one meetings with, you know, spending hours, if not multiple days going over, resolving because everything is you're kind of like a doctor when you're fixing these problems everybody's computer is similar yet it's different everybody has different apps installed everybody has a different type of it's not identical hardware it's not identical operating systems but if you you sit with me we'll figure out what your problems are mobile wallet is a little bit harder mobile wallet is harder you know but the desktop wallet is is quite easy to figure out how to get somebody over a hurdle it's not fast though sometimes sometimes it is Tyler's asking me for a, a, a walkthrough on my day. It's, if I had time to give Tyler a walkthrough on my day, I'd happily do it. But it's like uh, Tyler would have to. That, Tyler I, would have to mirror me. I just have. He would just have to record what I'm doing all day long. It's no, but that that is an interesting thing because I know it's the behind the scenes, and 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 we're all kind of working on these so we can get these yeah. out because it's something that people have have shared that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. But I, without a doubt 
I would love to see your behind the scenes voice. It's boring. Uh, it's totally boring. No, 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 no. Well, but you think it's boring, but I think it would be the, the most interesting of anybody on the, on the squad. So I start my morning with like four hours of playing Fortnite with my kids. And then, no, I'm kidding. I'm just, that was a joke. I was going to say, no, I don't believe it's that. It's a total joke. I think I played it maybe twice in my life with them. So that's a never, never. And it's just not my thing. <laughs> Couldn't you just hire one of your kids to follow you around for a day with the camera? I wouldn't let him do that. No. They could do it, I suppose. They could do it on their iPad. That would be funny. I'll do it. No. I know where you are. I'll come out and visit you. <laughs> Yeah, come out and visit me, voice. My mom's coming soon, too. You can meet my come mom. Come out and meet your mom. <laughs> oh, so what's going on? This is Are we winding down now? There's like there's like 15 people left here. What, what's going on? How many people in here? We're on the wind down. Post- we started today around 11 a.m., so we've been here for over two hours. So let me... We've been having a really nice... I, I say, yeah. Let me ask you a question. I'm going to be jumping on a concierge call here in about 30 minutes here in about yep. 30 minutes. So that means a client has set up a concierge call. I pay for these calls. I pay for the whole setup. That's something I give back to the community. So they're setting up a concierge call. I'm going to help them over a hurdle. What kinds of topics can you ask me about that I might be able to have you, if you've got any hurdles you're dealing with, um, what you got going on? If you, anybody can ask questions, I'll, I'll happily answer them. I'm, I'm here for a few more minutes. Hey, boys. Welcome to the group concierge call yeah. with the voice. Concierge with the voice. Have you made any progress on our old stat spot? Oh, uh, you know, I, I stopped working on the stat spot only because um, we're making a migration to Discord. And so um, the Telegram bot uh, as, uh, as a, a magic FUD Canon would know is that um, I have a Discord bot that's built around TipBot, but it has financial features. I've been working on Discord. So Discord is uh, has a new bot that I'm making that will have all the same support functions, maybe some privacy uh, increasing functions that are into it. When I get that bot finished for the basics on the um, masternode check, the staking check, um, I build this in my free time, so it's not uh, it's not something I have a lot of time for. But um, I will also be adding um, some of the features and functionality um, uh, for the stats bot. That's something that Neeks is actually building. You see the, the sort of the really pretty colorful stats item that he outputs. It's not exactly the same as what Robert used to do. I was going to mirror Robert. So when I'm done on that, but I am winding down on the Telegram. So Telegram's bot won't get any more updates or any more features, but those updates I was working, including stats, will make it into Discord. So does that answer your question? It kind of was round roundabout. But... Absolutely. Thank you so much. You are very, very welcome. Very, very welcome. Yep. That's an easy so voice going back to the merge for a second. Yeah. Um, like high level, how, how are you feeling about the move the guy i've just read some articles talking about they're kind of uh kind of indulging in the the environmental fud arguments yeah and just i think i think like, that that a lot of people it's just like anything else we have um people who will grab onto politics or movements and to them uh it's a religion right i mean so we 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 get involved in things because it inspires us, right? And so some of that surrounds the, um, the, 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 the Ethereum blockchain or Bitcoin blockchain on its energy consumption. Um, if you step back and you look at everything and you look at the way that the proof of work mining, how, how it actually works and, and, and you look at it on Ethereum, there's no question one uses more electricity than the other. Um, there's no question about that. But it doesn't do the things that they state it's doing. There's a lot of misinformation out there that is promoted as truth. Um, so so I, I would just say that 
keep an open mind uh, when you see these things. And when somebody is on fire about this is ruining the environment as a surety, right? As, as it's for sure, it's set in stone. This is doing this or this brings more freedom, right? I mean, so then you have the other extreme that you can only use this coin because this coin is the only coin because it does X and it gives you everything and no other coin can. There's all sorts of things. Maximalism is a type of religion too. Right. It's it's um so yeah, I don't really care whether Ethereum is proof of stake. Uh I will tell you that it's not proof of stake like Divi's proof of stake. Um, I will say it's completely unrelated to what would be traditional proof of stake. Um uh it's very, very different. It has it's actually unrelated to what we do at all uh, completely. That what we would do would be more akin to what Bitcoin is doing from the original philosophy and the idea for the technology and ethereum is further away sticking with its smart contract process right and a beacon some other centralized beacon that uh, sets the tone for the change and who's selected to be the earner um it's 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 really adding more layers as opposed to the purity of i ran the race and i run i won right if we all get in a foot race and we all have little knapsacks on and I'm bigger and stronger. Of course, I'm going to win more often. But after a while, um, you know, Ryan, who's, you know, he's only like five feet tall. So he's going to get there uh, after I tire out and then Ryan's going to win and he's going to win his batch. Uh, it's, it's, it's a race. And in proof of work, that's what it is. In, proof of, in the proof of stake they're doing, everybody's working. Everybody's um, is, is validating everybody is this, and then the, then there's a randomization that the, that somehow they get randomly chosen through the through the beacon chain, and then you get you get randomly gifted the opportunity to get get the coins. It's very different than Divi. Divi is still a race. Divi every every validator node that is staking is competing against every other validator node. Here in Ethereum, they're all doing the same thing, and uh, you know like popcorn somebody's going to get chosen so it's very very different very very different now notarization doesn't happen either that that happens on the evm so it's um yeah it's that's i could learn a lot more about it that would be true but it's just unique ethereum is something different that's all i can say um yeah. Do you do you think Bitcoin is always going to be proof of work? Uh, do you think it's important that it's always proof of work? Well, I th do you think I, I think that it'll never convert to proof of stake. That I could say. I think that there's cool. other um, technologies. I was just speaking to uh, to um, our own dev, uh, if, if, our, who works on the Divi blockchain. And, um, and uh, we were talking about, and he was sharing some ideas about some of the technologies um, that, uh, that, are, that could keep Bitcoin proof of work. Um, and then, of course, also make it to where there isn't the issue um, of the high degree of energy you know, consumption. There are some things they could do. I think that they, as long as they can make it continue as proof of work, right? They can make it proof of work. Um, I think it'll continue. I think you'll, you would see that more than the modification to a proof of stake protocol. It's, it's, it is the maximalist theme, right? You don't see maximalist, you know, bending. That's why they're maximalists. It has to stay proof of work, but the proof of work algorithm they're using now isn't the only proof of work algorithm. There are other ones that they could use different things they could add. Have you looked at Chia at all, Voice? Chia is, um, they're not proof of time, right? Are they proof of time? Proof of space and proof time. Space, proof of space and time. Yes, I have looked at Chia. Um, uh, not in depth, though. I haven't looked at it in depth. Uh, there were some, I was looking at proof of space um, and time, um, mainly proof of space. And there were some, you know, you always look at what are the, what are the potential opportunities for someone to do something malicious, right? So you have to kind of weigh the balance. What is the likelihood that people would either waste time or gain something? 
um, in the opportunity to, to be malicious. Right. And so I think there's some balancing going on. And the reason why Chia chose proof of space and time uh, is because it, it adds some features to mitigate some of those. Uh, I'm just not sure. I'd have to read more about it. I have to read more about it. I don't know too many people who, who participate on Chia. That's probably one thing. Yeah, you know, I don't know that much about it either. It's yeah. just kind of popular in some other circles that I, I frequent sometimes. Um, and I, yeah, I don't own any. I really do need to learn more. It sounds like an interesting project. Um, yeah. The, the guy that created it was this guy, Bram Cohen, mm-hmm. who was the creator of BitTorrent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and also gets, I think he was maybe the only person cited in the Bitcoin white paper. Yeah, that's way back. Yeah, so he's been thinking about this stuff for a really long time. And he just seems like kind of a, an interesting character. Like, I, I really, I'd like him and, and Nick or him and Jeff to have a chat. Because it, it seems like they would get along um, just because they both, they all seem like they're very, very focused on the, um, the founding principles of, of, you know, cryptocurrency and peer-to-peer payment networks and stuff like that. Um, and... Yeah, you know, Bram made some funny comments about how he didn't give any VCs any of the tokens when they were, you know, fundraising or whatever. VCs like bought in for equity only um, because he didn't want to give the VCs a bunch of tokens that they would dump on everybody. Mm -hmm. And he just had some funny comment about how VCs are like, they're they're all just a bunch of mean people or something like that. (laughs) And he he just seems like a a a funny guy, really smart and. uh, I, like he's he, he's surrounded with some some really smart people but chia i've tried to play with it a little bit but it's really not user friendly so if there was some way that divi and, and chia could kind of collaborate on you know building a an easy interface for some of the stuff that they're building and you know partnering on on some things it just seems like there's some potential there yeah i mean obviously um i'm open for everything and i know that uh, you guys all are and and i'm just uh, as i said a community member like you guys i think the team when they're building um really does look at that goal especially when you look at josh right josh um innovations that's his thing looking at those opportunities i think from a lab's perspective i mean i think that they would integrate another community um First, you know, they're going to look at where is everyone, right? I mean, where where are the opportunities to really help the most people? And then you have this balancing act. Well, is this a good idea, right? Should you implement this? I think they have to make a lot of those decisions on Divi Everywhere where it's best to put the energy because during development, that's the one thing that um, I've learned, of course, because I've gotten so close to this team is that it's time and it's people's it's money is what it really comes down to. It's time and, and money. And uh, with your devs, do you have your devs work on this or do you have them work on that? Everything has a balancing act. I mean, I hate to say that, but it, um, yeah, that's, that's the, the portion that everybody has to make a decision on. If you have a business, whether it's an open source and everybody's volunteering, you have to be concerned about your volunteers time, right? Um, you know, you, you just can't keep passing out things to do the volunteers time only has so much time. There's only 24 hours in a day. <laughs> There's only so many you can do all the work. And so, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a Josh question there. I don't see any reason why we can't integrate everyone as far as I'm concerned, but then again, you don't want to, um, uh, you don't want me to try to build it. Like I'm building a stats bot. Never happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see, I'll be honest with you, since we're being candid, I'd like to see ADA. Let's just talk about it. Cryptocurrency. I, I, I don't have any control over that, but wouldn't it be cool if we had ADA in the wallet? I would like to see it. Why? I would like to see it if we had ADA and we had a had an ADA node we could allocate to um, that we could just store our ADA in the Divi wallet and instead of, uh, yeah, wouldn't that be great? Divi Labs has their own ADA node. That would be awesome. That would be really cool. Totally. Yes, take, take ADA from the totally. Wallet, yeah. I'd be I'd be all over that. You know, that's that's a great coin, right? It's um I think they've got a lot of 
things they're still working on. There's a lot of irons in the fire. Are they done? No way. They're not even close to being done. Do they take a long time? Absolutely. They take a long time. Does it have to be just right? Well, yeah, don't argue with, uh, you know, who on Twitter, cause he'll give you the finger. Um, yeah. So, so, so yeah, I, I think that uh, ADA is a, is a good change, right? It's um, that would be, I'm a little bit scared of, I'm a little bit scared of anything that Hoskinson touches. Well, yeah, because it's, it's, if, if he finishes it, it's going to be nice and perfect and shiny. If you put a fingerprint on it, he's going to cut your head off. <laughs> he's never going to finish it. He's just going to keep talking. No, well, he's not the one in charge all the way like that. They're, they got, they're putting stuff out. I, if it was just Charles, that might be a problem. But at some point, you have to ship. <laughs> right. Speaking of crazy Hoskinson and ghost chains, we were talking about ETC er- earlier. Mm. And so I've always, I've always thought of that as kind of like a, a joke project, kind of like a hoax, kind really? of like. It's just a ghost of a project that nobody's really working on. But am I completely wrong? On no, that? there's devs on. Bullish. There's devs. There's devs on ETC. ETC is the original Ethereum. They they are Ethereum. Now that doesn't mean that they didn't and weren't founded with the original goal of converting to proof of stake too. That's the one thing everybody needs to realize is that Ethereum was never meant to stay proof of stake. Ethereum was always. This is what we're going to do. This is the layers which we're going to go into. And we're going to go into, this is early on, right? Um, Proof of stake. So that being said, um, yeah, I mean, Ethereum Classic is the immutable ledger. Remember, Satoshi gave us something that we could trust, that is trustless, that if, if I make a transaction today, um sans you know forks and orphans and these kinds of things we're not talking about a new chain itself we're talking about just the way the chain's natural competition happens um that i can trust a transaction that was done two weeks ago on divi two weeks ago on bitcoin right i don't have to think about it going back um there's a, a space in time where devs community people running those if you ever ran a mist i think it was mist wallet that i used to have to sync to that was a pain um back in that 2016 time frame they just essentially erased history so they erased history and so if you have a, the immutable the pu- purity of of that true history um ethereum doesn't have that ethereum erased yeah. a piece of its history what happened what happened to all those dow hack coins though well, there they would all, all that stuff still exists on Ethereum Classic. Yeah. And so somebody's just got a fat wallet. Uh, you'd, of yeah, you'd, have, you'd have to look into that. I don't know. I don't. I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I have no idea. Even so, so what? Yes, they do, and they rightfully do. Unfortunately, because developers on that kind of technology. Now I will be critical. Now, now you'll hear my 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 heart beat. I used to be. So most of you are sitting here who know me. I used to be the hugest Ethereum fanboy long, long, long before any of this stuff that I talk about today. I started nearly as an Ethereum fanboy. I'm talking about the kind of person walking down the street. I had Ethereum shirts I wore everywhere. And that's all I talked about was Ethereum. And so after that, I, I pretty much left Ethereum. So I, when that happened, because of course what Satoshi started um developers whether it's bitcoin or divi or ethereum or litecoin or any app that you use there is some responsibility that developers have to make sure that you're not at risk right of losing things um that uh, that when you create an opportunity uh, of an app that you use that that uh that it's going to operate a specific way and it should be, be developed where things are both secure and immutable and, and it should operate just like that. And we should have that yeah. confidence. And of course we can also audit. That's the other thing that we say, we state in open source is that, well, you can look at the, you can look at the contract, right? That's, that's sometimes what we say. You can look at this. And when you start getting into these um, oracles, 
essentially an Oracle or where you're aggregating data in a DAO where people are getting together and the, and this, this algorithm is taking the votes and you're putting things together. Um, if you use or build that in a way that you didn't do due diligence, you create problems and everybody who jumped on board participated willingly in that potentiality of risk. And so, yeah, they lost. I mean, how many of us in here have jumped into coins that uh, died, the communities disappeared or, um, or those, the, you know, I have bags of coins. I've talked to some of you. I know you have bags of coins where they just, these blockchains don't exist at all anymore. Those were the risks that we, that we got into. And I think there was a risk in Ethereum. And since then I'm, it's not that I don't have any Ethereum. I do have a little bit of Ethereum, but I sold all of my Ethereum pretty much at, right after that. And um, I, even when I did my NFTs, I refused to use Ethereum. I used Polygon. Um, you know, well, actually not me, my daughter, but uh, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I just, it's not that I won't use Ethereum. I just would prefer not to. It's just a personal thing, right? You don't want me to get angry and sit with Nick and then uh, Cannon and 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 uh, and uh, you know all of us here together get Nick's ear and say, "Hey, let's roll back the blockchain." That's essentially what they did. I mean, if we were all angry at something that was built, then we convinced everybody to roll it all back. Yeah, does that sound good? <laughs> sound right. I guess I don't know about that, but if you could just speed up the block time a little bit so that the what day is what day is Divi Day? Divi Day is what on the 27th, 27th. So it's close, yeah. It's possible. Speed up the blockchain, devs, do something. (laughs) I guess what you'd have to do is uh, I'll tell you how you could you could you could trick it. Everybody stop staking. Yeah, listen to the man. Everybody stop. <laughs> Everybody no. stop staking. I, I I will be the good one, and I'll keep staking. You guys all stop staking, and the difficulty oh, increase. Thank you. Thank you. Or the difficulty will decrease. I'll be able to mine really fast the blocks, and um, and then you know, I'll I'll take the you know it'll be painful. I'll take all the extra you know mints that I get to keep. Um, it'll be okay. I'll I'll, I'll suffer through it, and then we'll make Divi Day. That's essentially how it happens, Divi, yeah. Divi Day will be the voice's favorite day of the year. Exactly, because you guys Ball made time. it You made it my Divi Day. <laughs> Happy Divi Day for the voice. We'll just rename it to the voice day. So you can tell when there's more people staking, by the way, if you go to the Explorer and you'll watch the block times. It's trying to adjust, but it, it changes the difficulty. And so the difficulty is increased or decreased in, in an estimate it's not perfect. It's in an estimate. Um, there's a lot of other things that go into it, like the times and those kinds of things, but it's based upon the participants. So yeah, for those of you who've worked on the beta tests on testnet, um, you know, the eight of you, you know, had a difficulty of, you know, it's like 800 or something at Divi's blockchain. There's many thousands of people, you know, staking on validator nodes and vaults and those kinds of things. And it's like, I think it's 20 to 30,000 difficulty. So we want it more and more, right? It's the more participants that are involved. It's the stronger the blockchain is, the more immutable, right? We just use that word immutable, the more trust we can have in the history of the blockchain. So with the move to proof of stake is uh, ETH now less immutable. Hello. My Regan. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> oh, I hear you now. It went all, all went silent for me for a minute. Yeah, same here. Okay. Oh, yeah. Who are the, uh... Who 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 are the uh the the new uh, Divi influencers? I thought that was you. 
What, me? It's me? Yeah. yeah. No, it's not me. <laughs> you better get to work, my friend. Oh, man. All right, I'm going to have to get some threads out. <laughs> Yeah, I, I got no info on the influence wars, but I'm sure we'll learn more soon. What about Berg? Berg, you know me? I thought that was, I, I thought when I heard it earlier when you guys were talking about it, I thought that was like a talking point during the, <laughs> during this uh, thing. Oh, no. Um, Yeah, you know. Sorry, I'm, I'm dealing with a... Uh, my daughter busted her lip and I'm not <laughs> oh no worries no worries uh, poor little bird daughter oh. yes this is what happens when you ask them to play amongst themselves <laughs> <laughs> yep we were all young once we did that Well, um, I think we were kind of getting to a wrap-up point anyway, guys. Um, let's all send some positive energy to Ryan and his daughter and let her lip heal really well. Um, and, you know, anybody have some closing words, anything they want to say, share, throw some flowers, anybody in the audience, anybody on the stage. As always, it's been fantastic connecting with you guys it was a really fun conversation today that was really cool that that jake um popped in from games interactive um thank you for everybody that popped up and participated we got to do a little trial run of some divvy quiz questions i gave well i haven't given away some divvy yet but i'm as soon as we get off this call i'm gonna go plug in some addresses give away some divvies um so yeah, it's always really fun talking to you guys. Voice, I don't know if Ryan told you, but we got like a really bright, glowing review of a concierge call um, that you had with a, a person earlier. I think don't think they're in the room anymore, but they came up and, and just had a really great review for an interaction they had with you and how you helped them so much. And they didn't have a, a the greatest grasp of the English language. And so like working through the issue and they didn't even know what was wrong, but you would like dedicated a bunch of time and we're really great with them um and so yeah it was great just like meeting some new people getting some some new, some stories about what tv means to you guys and i look forward to seeing you guys next week i i know ryan had mentioned that we might um shift the time around a little bit just due to some some uh, personal conflicts, but um, we'll give you more information on that soon. Maybe put out a survey on, on timings that are going to work for all you guys, or maybe just sort something out between um, the hosts where we can, we can get the time covered that, that we need to. But um, yeah, I invite anybody to say some last words. I, I, they, they went into the other room, so I, you might hear them in a second, but what I was going to say was um, in terms of the timing, whatever if we do adjust from our you know normal time that we've been here uh we will make sure that we announce that so that everybody you know if they need to make any adjustments or whatever to catch it live um we'll, we'll try to let everybody know as far in advance as we can so we're not gonna sneak it up on you if if we can avoid that so um yeah just just keep you know, have those notifications on for, for Divi project and you'll know, you'll know well in advance that, Hey, this space is maybe a little bit earlier or maybe a little bit later, or maybe it's sticking right with the, the same time, but. And Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong, but the plan um, moving forward is to record all these spaces and get them onto YouTube, maybe chop them up a little bit, stuff like that. Right. Yes, that is correct. Um, we so even if you can't get here live there should be plenty of opportunities to get to the information although we would love to have as many people here live as possible so that we can get that uh interaction on the stage yeah we love to to hear from you guys um and have people raise their hand and, and communicate you know in real time but if you miss it not to worry uh you can re-listen to it here on twitter um just go to any of the posts that we were that there's that little red bar uh, and you can re-listen to the recording. And in addition, uh, I can't say at what point, but 
hopefully early next week it'll be up on youtube and last week's uh space is up on youtube we we got that on wednesday of last week or of this week excuse me uh so you you can watch slash listen slash put it on in the background and just kind of listen um while you're doing other things but ultimately uh it, it is accessible in a couple different formats and i think we do uh still plan to clip uh put out clips you know so maybe voice said something life-changing uh or you know whatever the case may be we want to put those little 30 second to a minute clips out so that people will not only hear the the information but also be inspired to hey this is something i want to listen to so they'll go listen to the the recorded vert uh you know space and then hopefully next the next time they'll they'll join us in in person so that's all part of the plan um we're we're gradually uh making improvements so so yes that is something that even if you can't make it live you'll have the opportunity to listen or watch or, you know, whatever. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's all, I don't know what that is, but, uh, yeah, I guess we're, I guess any, any last minute, uh, closing thoughts, uh, aside from what I mentioned and looks like magic can magic fud can is waving goodbye. I'm out. <laughs> okay. Peace. All right. Well, I, and then what I will say is have a wonderful uh, Friday. If it is still Friday, if it's Saturday morning, hope you have a wonderful weekend. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be here with all of you. We look forward to re uh, joining you all next week. Uh, but in the, excuse me, in the meantime, have a wonderful weekend. Uh, go touch grass. Um, relish in the the fact that the divi is outperforming most other assets in the